everyone what is going on welcome back to the channel on this lovely lovely sunday afternoon here in south georgia good to see y'all in the house I'm just fresh off the airbus myself flew a 321 today so we are going complete opposite from the 321 to the 170 we're flipping it around here i did not smash my landing this morning by the way i almost did though almost did getting trying to get used to this Embraer flare again and then going into a 321 probably not the smartest ideas but we didn't we didn't smash it it was a uh, probably like a 150 it was I. it was I. but uh good to see y'all foobar's in the house what's up man you simply must get fiber at the texas house so awesome getting these streams foobar man if i could i would you know it man if i i would pay a lot of money to be able to have them run a line we'll see what happens we'll see what the future has in store for us but yes man if it's good to be back to the roots of the channel man this is how it started having the internet my own house being able to stream when i want to stream and uh it just makes it so much more enjoyable but today 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 is a special day because we're gonna really break this down we've got a short flight really easy flight plan so we're gonna spend a little time talking about this particular aircraft now I've been flying it for what five streams in a row it's the fifth stream four streams at the very least and I've been trying to I'm listening to these trucks these GSX trucks are they're throwing me off here with the uh, catering situation um, I feel like I've got a handle on this bird now enough to where I can easily identify what I what's a bug going on in the airplane or maybe something that's not modeled to something that I needed to fix now I'm happy to report that I was able to properly bind my honeycomb Bravo 
all the altitude, heading, speed, selector, all that stuff on the Bravo now. So it, it's all bound natively within Microsoft. You just need to figure out how to, uh, or, or at least for me, the bindings were incorrect. So they, were, uh, they weren't working, but it's all native to bind. That makes a huge difference in flying this aircraft. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. We're gonna talk about, you know, do I recommend this airplane? And why have I been flying it so much? A-Rod said I must have, you know, someone's holding something over my head because uh, uh, I just keep flying it so much. And the, the, truth, the truth of the matter is I'm having so much genuine fun flying this airplane that I don't want to stop. Like we have flown the 737, not so much the 737, but we've flown the, uh, we've flown the A320, we've flew in, flown the 737 a great bit. You know, we've thrown all the, we've flown all the generic airliners that we've had on the sim for quite some time a lot so to mix it up is nice but at the end of the day i just enjoy this airplane because it's a great mix of of manual flying and automation it's like it's right there on the cusp now it doesn't have a true vnav it doesn't have vnav really at all um and when that comes it'll be even just way easier to fly but i almost like it the way it is right now because it gives you that hands-on experience so we'll get more into detail on this here there's a couple of things you have to understand about how this aircraft operates such as speed on elevator speed on thrust got to understand what a flight path angle is you have to understand how to accommodate things that aren't modeled yet and once you understand those things it's actually a pretty pleasant experience so we will do that we will talk about that more as we get uh, as we get going on throughout this stream. So, uh, let's see. Virtual flight diners. I did a flight in Embraer 110 in Mokulele and Microsoft Flight Sim. Yeah. So this is. I was going to use a Hawaiian livery, which is pretty spicy. It looks really, really good on this airplane, uh, the Hawaiian Airlines on the E175. But it's actually. I mean, that's fictional. Now, this. Believe it or not, this aircraft, Mokulele was operated by yours truly Republic Airlines uh, under the uh, Shuttle America certificate call sign Mercury. So uh, Republic Airways Holdings had three certificates, Chautauqua, Shuttle America, and Republic. This was one of the umbrellas. I think they uh, leased or rented or, or, or sent three jets. They had three jets, three jets over in the islands doing a partnership here. I think Mesa got involved on it. I don't really know the ins and outs on it, but for a short while, Republic Airlines or Republic Airways Holdings was operating E-170s in the islands of Hawaii. So it's kind of neat to uh, go back here with a, uh, go back on the blast from the past here. What's going on with the red tail cone? Red tail cone, what do you mean? This one here? It, uh, oh, you're talking about over here? It looks like it's just copper. <laughs> or, like, what does that look when it's supposed to be, like, really silver and it got anodized? I don't know. I don't know. Looks fine to me. Looks like there's a little paint on the outside, though, on the tip of it. But, um, it looks good. I love the front. I love the nose of this thing. Look at that. That is a sweet little livery on this jet. The heat damage. There you go. It is heat damage. There you go. Yeah, those APU tail cones, uh, they show heat damage and they get the... That is, I think there's like a special word for it. I can't think of it right now. Where are we flying today? Uh, overspray didn't mask it up. We're flying to, where are we flying? PHTO. What is that airport? Uh, Hilo. Hilo. And then we're probably going to do the turn back. It's only 90 miles uh, there. And we're going to stay low level, probably about to one nine or zero, and then uh, head on back. So spirit of aloha. Let's hop into this jet and let's get into one of the first i'm going to fire up the gpu here and the first thing that you should have noticed by now and i mentioned this the first time i flew in this airplane here let me go battery one battery two let me get the sound up um that the the texturing of this cockpit is really really good it's really good like i have no gripes with the visual aspect of this airplane from the exterior modeling to the interior, to the wing views, to the cabin itself, no issues whatsoever. So if you're someone who's, you know, heard that this airplane does not look good, it's just a, a, they bought the model from X-Crafts, which I believe is true. Um, but as a consumer, I don't really mind. That doesn't, I mean, who, who cares at the end of the day? Like, I just want a good model um, and I want uh, a good texturing. And that's what we have here. We have a good model, good texturing, good views, 
So if you've heard differently, I can tell you from, from my PC and from with confidence that I actually really enjoy the visual aspect of this airplane. You're going up to 290, Team Vodka? That's really high, man. That's really high. Uh, don't pull an XP-72 on approach. Oh my gosh, Mr. Martini, don't remind me. That was so hilarious, man. One of my, well, well yeah, that was, that was funny, man. That was hilarious. <sighs> Sorry, I had to drink some water. I'm just super thirsty. I don't know why. I'm just like, can I get enough water today? Um, if they ever get VNAV figured out, I may just pick it up. Richland Music, I understand completely. A lot of y'all are waiting for VNAV to be implemented. Uh, if, if VNAV is a crutch for you, then yes, you're gonna, you won't be happy because there is no VNAV Im, uh, implemented. However, there are multiple ways to comply with vertical navigation constraints, which we're going to get into uh, probably after startup. We'll probably save the duration of climb and a little bit of cruise talking about speed on elevator and speed on thrust because you first have to understand those two concepts and then the other concepts on how to vertically navigate this airplane will start to make sense such as vertical speed and flight path angle so uh we'll get to that in a little bit but yes there is no vnav straight up not yet they said it's supposed to be implemented by what they ran the summertime or the next big update so if vnav is your crutch then you're not going to be you're not going to have VNAV on this jet. Now, for me, personally, I've flown, we've, what do we fly? The uh, Fokker F-28, love that airplane, love the uh, 146, love the Lear 35. All these jets, they don't have VNAV. So, you know, for me, I can figure it out. If you if you need that VNAV, then maybe stand by. Or take a, wait wait till we get a little further on in the stream here, and maybe things will start making a little bit more sense when I talk about vertical navigation on the airplane, and then maybe you'll want to reach out. Now, uh, oh, I didn't know I hit that uh, attendant call there. Now, keep in mind, this is not a sponsored plug stream at all. I've, pr I've paid uh, $40, whatever the full purchase price is for this airplane. I'm not trying to push an airplane. I'm not trying to sell an airplane. I'm literally just doing what I like to do, and that is share. When I really enjoy something, I want to share that with y'all because if, you've, if just one of you are pick it up, like, hey, man, I picked it up because you're streaming, and then you say, hey, I'm really enjoying it, get a lot of fun, that makes me feel good because that means i've done something to help someone else and i enjoy that so uh and if you pick it up and don't like it then you know tell me to screw off <laughs> we'll go it's all right i can handle it if you have any ga aircraft what would you have jordan uh probably the turbine and piston dukes <laughs> or the cessna 310 and if you want a single engine then the comanche but i like twins so it's got to be the cessna 310 or the tbm if it's a single uh, because I like turboprops more than pistons. But there are some really good GA options out there. All right, let's get the rest of this uh, setup finished here. And I'm going to walk you through, in the current state of this airplane, you really have to separate your f setup for your flight in two categories, which we do every day in real life. You have a pre-flight, and then you have a before start. So the pre-flight in this airplane, as of right now, what version is this? I don't know if it builds 6849. In the current version of this airplane, the best way that I have found out how to do my pre-flight is as follows. So what I'm going to do is, and I'll show you, I already did this part. You go to flight details and you import your SimBrief flight plan. It does have SimBrief uh, Im implementation, so you click download. I don't have the screen here right now. You click download. It brings it up to this little uh, up here, and then there's a little check mark. You click it, and then you're fully uplinked to your EFB. So that's part. That's pretty self-explanatory. Get your uh, get your sim brief set up here. Then you come to the departure tab, and then I'm going to pretty much leave the aircraft on this page or the EFB on this page. With it on this page, I hop down here, and we're going to start plugging away at the box. I got to readjust my view here a little bit. I don't like that view. There we go. Now we can see it. Eh, I don't really like that either. Can you see that all right? I think that's a better view there for number five. All right. <laughs> I don't like paying for turboprop maintenance though, exactly. Which one do you like better, 170 or 190? Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna, and chat, I'm gonna take my time answering these questions specifically 
on this stream because this is what this stream is really about. It's not about me. Ooh, look at this airplane. Ooh, look at the juice. Oh, look at it. It's really about me sharing what I have. So if you have questions like this, ask them and I'm going to do my best to answer them. So it may not be the most streamlined flight that we've done on this channel, but hopefully it'll be much more streamlined information. Uh, as far as preferring the 170 or 190, this is a real tough one for me. I've flown both jets in real life and I loved them both. In real life, I loved the 190 a little bit more. Reason being, honestly, straight up, I liked the wing view better on the 190 when I looked at the wing. It looked bigger. I felt like I was flying at the time. I was at a regional airline, right? So, But when you're flying a 190, it's like, oh, I feel like I'm flying a mainline airplane. So I just physically liked the look of the wing better. I liked the fatter engines. I liked the sounds better. And I liked the way... I don't want to say I like the way it handled better, but it definitely handled different. So from a real world perspective, I liked the 190 flying a little bit more. In sim world, all of those things transfer across just as they do in real life. The sounds are different in the 190. The model is different in the 190. And I actually like the wing views of the 190 in the sim better than the 170, 175. But that, I mean, it is such a small, minute difference that... For my recommendation, I would say pick which one you will fly the most. Each aircraft has its own tailored set of liveries. There's different airlines that operate those jets independently, right? So you have a bunch of airlines that operate 170s, 175s, then some operate 190s, 195s. So if you have an airline that you want to fly a lot and they have the 190, you're probably going to want to get the 190. If you want to fly the airline that has 170s, get the 170s. As far as core systems go, they're pretty much the same, except you have steep approach mode and a HUD in the Embraer 190. I haven't messed with steep approach or the HUD very much. We touched on it a little bit on our last breeze flight. Good looking HUD. I don't have any experience in real life with a HUD, so I'm just going to defer all HUD questions to real life HUD drivers. Now, uh, one important thing I will say, in real life, the Embraer 170 and Embraer 190 had different fl hand flying characteristics. Albeit small, you could definitely tell when you were in the 190 as opposed to the 170. I've said it before, the 190 is not a giant aircraft, but she handled like a lumbering giant in comparison to the 170. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that that is modeled through the two separate aircrafts that you can purchase. I use the same force feedback profile and I get different handling and flight characteristics of both airplanes. Um, the 190, a little bit more forgiving. Like I said, just a little bit slower. The 170, 175, a little bit more sporty, a little bit more reactive, if you will. It's just, you got to be a little bit more on your toes. 190 is more of a, I don't know, she's just more proportionate and more Cadillac-y if this was like a uh, more of a sports car. But those are that's my 170, 190 differences. You're not going to go wrong with either. Um, I thought I had a little bit better performance in the 190 as far as CPU performance, but that could have just been a placebo effect. Could have just been where we were flying at the time. I really don't know if there's a true difference. It's hard to tell with frame gen on in the first place. So, does it feel weird to fly a plane with the shape of a yoke though? Uh, final light? No, not really. It's like riding a bike, man. It comes back to you. It comes back to you. All right. Hope that was good. Hope you get, hope that answered your question. What kids do you prefer? <laughs> All right. One thing to keep in mind is I believe Boris. I, don't hope, I, I believe it's public knowledge. He is working allegedly on making a sound pack for the 170-175. So keep that in mind too. All right. Uh, transponder should be in standby. There we go. All right, let's continue with our pre-flight. So once you've downloaded, uplinked your SIM brief into the EFB, I go to the root page. Uh, we're going to go root, and we're going to download our flight plan. So we're PHNL. We're going to PHTO, so Papa Hotel Tango Oscar destination. With that in there, I don't know if you uh, – I think you have to put your flight plan call sign in here, which is uh, – we're Mercury. How cool is that call sign? I wish you could still hear them on the radio. Mercury is one of the cooler call signs. Tango Charlie Fox – uh, is the ICAO for Shuttle America TCF 357 and now we're going to go ahead and uh, send that request off <clears throat> fog on Maui has some juicy PHOG 
Oh, Jeff, I wish I would have known that. No one told me about it. Hotshot's in the house. Yes, he is, indeed. I will be sending you a copy hopefully next week when I have any bit of free time. Hotshot, appreciate you, man. I can't wait. That sounds like, uh, so Tuesday is what you agreed on? All right, cool. So he's going to send a copy over on Tuesday. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Flight plan data received. So now let's go ahead and download the flight plan link. Here it is, Honolulu PHTO, apply active. And now we are in the box. We're in business here. We're going to load it in. And in general, your general rule of thumb for the E-170, the Honeywell box here, the way this is going to work out, you want to do your stuff on this part of the McDo, and then you're going here. Do your stuff here, then you go here. That's kind of how the flow is on the McDo. And you always, or I keep calling it McDo, the FMS. Keep, a, keep an eye on your pages, too. You have three pages available, so you might do some stuff, change page, do some stuff, change page, do some stuff, and then, boom, go over to the next thing. And then when you get to the speeds, you're done. All right? So let's run through this. We want to do our departure. I actually don't even know what the winds and uh, what we're departing off of here. So let's go ahead and pull up our charts. Let's go PHNL. And let's pull a quick uh, weather. METAR, Honolulu. Uh, it sounded windy. 07016, gust 25. So, I think we're going to be departing. What are we going to do? 2-2 two, two right? I think we'll go 2-2. Two, two. 8 left. Why would you go 8 left? Why can't we go 2-2 two, two right? Is that not a thing? 2-2 two, two right would be more towards the south. Right? Isn't that what the wind direction was? Oh, I'm sorry, 070, not 170, 070. Okay, yeah, so eight left, eight left. We have to take off, from, we, it's a reef runway, reef runway, okay, okay. Eight right or two six left? Eight right, we're gonna go all the way to eight right. All right, let's go all the way to eight right, what the hell. It'll be a long taxi, but it's a short flight, so let's, let's do it. We're gonna go off the reef. Eight right, and the MKK, I believe, is our flight planned departure procedure. Uh, MKK5 to Pulps. <laughs> Who cares about winds? Reef runway. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, to Pulps. There we go. All right. So there we go. We did our stuff. What do we do? Hit this key. Apply. Okay. So we've got all of that in there, but we have two pages. Let's go next. Three. Let's go four. And actually, before we get to four, page number three with our destination airport, we have an arrival we got to load in. So we're going to go arrival. I have no idea what we're going to land there. Let's assume the winds are semi the same, right? Uh, we don't have a star. And Simbrief planned us landing on 2-6. So we're going to plan for 2-6. So I'm going to select runway 2-6. We'll load in the ILS 2-6. And we'll load it off of uh, Ito. Let me see where Ito is here. I'm looking at Sky Vector real quick. Uh, Ito is the VOR, so fine, we'll do it off the VOR. So Ito, uh, we're not going to do the star, so we just hit arrival. That's runway 26, Ito, ILS, apply. All right, next page, we've got our arrival. Next page, we're on page four, nothing there, no alternate. What do we do? We go here, perfect. Now, this is where I stop, come back to the EFB. We go over here to our depart tour. Let's fill in our data. We know we're going to take off eight right, a long taxi out. Flaps two or flaps four is standard. Uh, I'm going to run both uh, sets of flap numbers, eight right, both dry. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's want to run wet numbers in case we get some rain here. It is the tropics. Flaps two will be fine. Flaps two and four are your uh, standard for the 170, 175. If you do get the 190, be cautious because there is a, uh, it's different. It's one, I think it's flaps one is standard in the 190. And one and four or something like that. I have to look, but uh, make sure you sync your weather. Calculate. Calculation is done, and I'm going to click here. Real time loading. Real time loading has started. 5:42, and then what we can do is go to the manifest, and we have speeds ready to go. So I will hit send to McDo. Now, when I hit send to McDo, it's going to kind of do what PMDG did there uh, before the EFB, and I think it still does with GSX. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
basically goes through a set of clicks and it loads the perf from the EFB into the uh, FMC. Now, it was brought up that sometimes in this early access state, information can get uh, messed up here. So we always want to verify what's been put in the box. And you can think of it as a new hire FO is sitting over here loading the box, even if it's not a new hire FO, even if it's this very senior FO sitting next to you. What do we do as a crew? You always verify the other's work. All right, so we've, the work has been done. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna verify what we've done. I'm going to change this, SimBrief will default this to your actual. We're gonna go ahead and put our taxi landing fuel 300 and zero in the perf plan. I will go to the next page. I'm gonna load in my cruise altitude. Vodka said he's going to 2.9, that's way too high, man. I don't wanna spend the whole flight cruising. Let's go to 23, we'll go flight level 230. You don't have to put FL there. Cruise wins. I don't know where they are. A Rod's going to get mad at me. I'm not going to put them in, but if you know where they are, you can load your cruise wins in here. It will help you with your fuel planning. Takeoff CG is 14.4. Next page, we're on page three for three. We've done our stuff. Now, where do we go? Right here. Takeoff data set. Boom. We're going to do a TO1 takeoff. This is basically derating your takeoff thrust. You can use 11.8 thrust, or you can use 13,000 pounds. We're going to use TO1. Attics on, reference ECS on, that's your packs essentially, engine anti-ice or all anti-ice, such as wing anti-ice, not required. Flex takeoff, we don't do flex on this channel, but if you want to do a flex takeoff, you would select on, select your flex temp with the dial here, and then enter the flex temp. But we're going to do flex off toga takeoff. Once that's done, I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to go to FMS takeoff. FMS takeoff, let's verify our data. We are flaps two, takeoff CG, temperature, flex is off, TO1, addicts on. Okay, done our stuff, go to the right. Takeoff page, here's our speeds. What did I say at the very beginning? When you reach the speeds page, you're done. All right, so with that done, I'm going to then put up my uh, map page here. I'm gonna set up my vertical profile, which is not fully simulated. VNAV is not implemented, but I like having this screen here because it just looks blank without it. We always flew around with the vertical profile on. Uh, you could turn your TCAS on, all that other stuff. I'm going to get rid of, uh, actually, I'm going to leave. Normally, I would get rid of nav aids and airports, but because we're in the islands and there's not much going on here, I'm going to leave them on for situational awareness in this uh, particular case. And you can go ahead and throw your TCAS on if you want. So map page is done. I'm going to go over here, turn the hydraulic page on. Or I'm sorry, turn the flight control page on on the FO side, so we do a flight control check. All right, we'll do a flight control check after start. That is done, I'll get auto brakes after start, and then everything else is pretty much done. With everything done on the overhead, I will now begin my GSX boarding. Maybe Fractality will show up one day and he'll be able to do a uh, Embraer 170 to GSX. That would be pretty cool. So, we've spent the better part of 30 minutes in a pre-flight phase but a lot of that's been talking. You can really set this airplane up easily and quickly, and it's designed that way. It's streamlined, it's designed to be efficient and quick, uh, and if you're doing regional turns, doing a lot of turns, you wanna fly three, four legs in a day, it's gonna be very uh, efficient for you, even in its current state. Now we do have to open main exit here, so I'll go to the ground page, and I'm gonna open the main aircraft exit over here on the left side. And now we're gonna go ahead and start loading up. <clears throat> what is Addix? Addix is the automatic takeoff control or automa uh, automatic takeoff thrust control. Yeah, yeah. There, Arot says automatic takeoff thrust control. Uh, it will. It's Arot described it. If you lose an engine on takeoff or landing, it'll give you your operating engine reserve, engine power, among other things. Correct. That's. I'm trying to dig into the memory bank, but that is pretty much what I remember. Is it's for. Uh, an engine failure on takeoff and it will allow the operating engine to to give you the juice yeah, whereas you know like in the airbus if you lose an engine and uh we got to go you go toga so you kind of force it into toga uh, semi-similar roundabout close enough explanation but yeah just take off with it on is what you want take off with it on ecs like i said that's your uh, environmentals and then your flex, we've all 
we know what flex is by now on this channel. If you don't know what flex is, basically you assume temperature, the engine make it hotter than it is in theory, so it produces less thrust, so you save maintenance wear. It's not really a fuel savings thing. Flex is all about saving engine life or maintenance. That's really the main key. I think in some cases, doesn't flex burn more fuel? I don't know. Gustavo needs to be here for that. <laughs> I just read Alex. But sorry. No worry, Alex. No worries. Fireflyer says, do you recommend the E-Jets I've been holding off since it's still in development? Fireflyer. I say, I'll say it this way. I'm having a lot of fun with them. They fly great. They handle great. If you are okay, I think the biggest drawback for this jet for most people is the lack of VNAV. And I get it. We have a lot of children of the magenta line. All right. And that's not a dig. It's just a reality. You can safely, effectively, and relatively easily with practice operate this jet in intense ATC environments and be totally fine. You have an auto thrust system, you have an autopilot pilot system. Any autopilot issues that you have seen me have on this channel in the last four days with this aircraft has been specifically because I'm running a Bruner force feedback yoke and I'm working on software co uh, coordinating force feedback. Today, I have tweaked the profile, I've been working on it with Team Vodka. I think we've got it dialed in uh, and I don't really have that TCS issue. And in the two test sectors I've done, I've had zero autopilot issues. So the autopilot issues are on my end, not the aircraft's end, but it's on my end. So, uh, but yeah, Team Vodka helped uh, squash that bug on our profiling. So that is pretty neat. But Fireflyer, if you are okay with no VNAV and you know how to fly an airplane with a three to one rule, I honestly don't know why I wouldn't recommend this jet in its current state. Now, again, you are purchasing an early access aircraft. Same thing I tell everybody when I was flying the Lear 35. Look, I'm having a ton of fun with it. I love the, the Lear 35. It's an early access jet. Everything's going to change probably between now and release. I can only tell you what I'm feeling personally. And with the E-Jets, I have been more than surprised in a lot of aspects because initially I was told, I mean, I think it was just kind of the general vibe was they're not good. Don't waste your money on them. And everybody was saying that. So I was like, okay. I mean, if it was just one person, you know, that might go, you know, right, well, let me go check it out for myself. But when everybody's kind of saying that, it's like, okay, well, maybe they're right. But I saw, I saw, I don't remember who I saw flying it. And then I was like, oh, that looks interesting. Then someone was posting screenshots in the Discord. And then we had that crazy stream in the CRJ where everyone's like, look, you got to get the E-Jets just to try them. Because half of you in the chat were saying, they're not that bad. You have to give it a shot. So I did for the people. And I'll be completely honest with you. I was very surprised in a lot of aspects with this jet. See, I can fly without VNAV. I just don't want to. Richland Music, look, I, I am not. Hey, I don't want you to take it as a dig at all. I am right there with you, man. I hear you. There are times when I don't want to mess anything with mental math. I just want Airbus mode. I want to hit AP1. I want to sit back and relax, enjoy the flight. Now, here's the cool part is if this jet, I say if because we don't know, but it is planned. Obviously, it will be finished, hopefully, right? When this jet is finished, the real Embraer with FMS speeds and VNAV is more lazy than the Airbus A320. You can literally take off, set your thrust, then you can set the bottom altitude and it will go all the way up to cruise, level off, and then it will descend. Actually, I think you might have to get the cruise first. I don't know, A-Rod, you might be able to correct me. Either way, if you get the cruise, you can set your bottom altitude, FMS speeds, that sucker will fly your whole flight plan, start down on time, start slowing down, so all you have to do is extend flaps so you don't get a shaker. That's really it. And then throw the gear down and land. It is more automated than the A320. <laughs> I am a passenger princess in the cockpit of an E-Jet. Exactly, exactly. So Fireflyer, I hope that kind of answers your question. Like I just, I can only tell you what I have experienced on this airplane and the things that I have experienced in relation to how these aircraft operate in real life and how I remember them flying. I like them. I'm enjoying them. There are, there's one bug, well, there's two bugs, uh, two or three, depending on how you do it. There's two slash three bugs that I think might be uh, like hopefully worked out in the future. The number one issue 
that is a true bug is the flight path vector sometimes gets stuck gets hung up either in an a cell mode or it gets stuck in the wrong position that's obviously a bug hopefully they can iron it out because in the e-jet the flight path vector is on all the time you don't turn it off i think your mic might be uh, messed up whoever's communicating um so uh the flight path vector issue getting stuck now i have i think i found somewhat of a workaround and that's if you use the pitch control sync button Sometimes that unlocks it. So if we get that bug today, I'll try what I've been doing to see if it kind of unfreezes the flight path vector. Second true bug that I've noticed on the aircraft, when you fly uh, or when you get a direct or you do FMS direct, the flight director is very, very sensitive. It, well, all flight directors are very sensitive, but it almost seems like it needs a little bit more tuning because if you try to follow it when you're hand flying, it can almost lead you to oscillate. Uh, I think it just needs a little bit more tuning in the flight director Q department. Um, and then the, I think that was it. The third bug was sometimes the Q getting stuck, but it, it kind of goes with the flight path vector. Uh, maybe snappy, snappy might be the right direct in A-Rod. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Do you feel like it's that way? I, I feel like when I hand fly this bird, I don't remember having to chase the Q so much that I do in this one. It almost seems like it's, I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it other than that. Maybe you have an experience. All right, we're all boarded up. We're gonna get the uh, APU started. Team Vodka said it's raining, so we gotta make sure we ran wet numbers. So we will double check our wet numbers, but let's take a listen to the APU fire up here. Liam Arnold, yes, it can do an RNAV approach. Correct. But remember, you have to control your vertical, so you got to do your step down. If you could choose one, 190 or 170, and why? Uh, I, I talked about this briefly, Mad Rabbit. I don't want to, I talked about it for about five minutes earlier. Um, honestly, my recommendation is they are both equally great. Pick the one that has the, that the airline that you want to fly the most operates. So, like, if you want to fly JetBlue Ops, you love JetBlue, you probably want the 190 because that's what they operate, right? If you want to fly Regional, Brickyard, SkyWest, uh, Mesa, you want to fly those Ops, true Regional Pilot Ops, then you're going to be happy with the 170, 175. I will tell you from personal experience, I enjoyed the way the 190 flew in real life better. I enjoy the way the 190 flies in the sim better, and it's not that it's the 170 is wrong, it's just it's representative of the different aircraft. Um, and probably most importantly, the 190 wing is just chef's kiss. The 190 wing is just, uh, it's just, is like, it's better than the 7.3 wing. Like, I love the Embraer 190, 195 wing. Super juicy. I love the wine. 47 pushing from uh, Alpha 18. All right, so it's raining. Uh, we ran both speeds. We ran wet numbers and dry numbers. If I go to the manifest, you can see here, we'll verify 26, 32, 43, 26, 32, 43. So they're the same. Uh, 3.9. All right. So it all works even with wet numbers. So they're the same. So we are good running those same numbers. Uh, so we're all good there. Let's go ahead and get electric pump. And then one, is it one A on? I, I can always forget. That's on. We'll get the fast and seatbelt sign. No smoking on. And... We'll zoom this down and we will get ready for pushback and departure. Are we on Unicom? I'll put this on the radio page. Pi Mick, welcome to Private Pi. Glad to have you on board, my friend. Honolulu traffic, Mercury 357. We'll be backing off gate Charlie 4. We're going to be making a long taxi to 8 right. Honolulu traffic. All right. Let's prepare for push and depart tour. We're going to go ahead and disconnect you. We'll go over to the ground tab, and we will close the door, and we will disconnect you.
My E191, if I want to activate a load, it says key is invalid. Copy, paste, man. That key is like 427 carats long. Copy and paste. Uh, copy and paste your key. Your, your uh, code. I'll go with the 190 then. Your streams really made me want to fly this thing in Microsoft. Mad Rabbit. Hey, like I said, if you can operate without VNAV, then I think you will really enjoy this airplane. I do. I don't see why someone would not enjoy it. Um, it's definitely operable. You just have to understand some key functions on how the airplane is going to respond. It's not a Boeing and it's not an Airbus. So that's what we're going to hit on. We're really going to hit on the flight mode enunciator, which is the FMA, which is right here. You will live and die by the FMA. Long before I flew the Airbus, the instructor told me you will live and die by your FMA. That's true on the Airbus and even more so on the Embraer 190. So that's why these uh, mode guidance panel lights, they don't even illuminate. Uh, it's a company option, but I never flew an Embraer 190 or 170 where this uh, guidance panel lit up. Uh, and that is to force the crew to look here to understand what their airplane is doing. You must understand the words and letters that are going to show up in this FMA column. A Rot, that is a great point. He says, I will say the biggest issue flight simmers have with the E-Jets is they treat it like a Boeing or an Airbus, and that's how they run into problems. That is very, very true. Facing east or west, which way do we want to go on Zulu? <gasps> Facing east or west on Zulu? Uh, I want to face west on Zulu, I think. Release parking brakes, please. Brakes released. Uh, 73 NG driver, super critical with this plane after your flights. I bought the E19. That's really good. Thanks, V18. Hey, Marco, that's awesome, man. Glad to hear it. He's super critical with a lot of things. So, which that's his provocative. I you, mean, you, everybody can be critical if they want. I just I try to find the balance of, um, of of I try to find a balance of being critical and being realistic. Because at the end of the day, I hate to break it to everyone, there is no sim on planet earth that flies like a real airplane a hundred percent there's no sim on planet the, the level d multi-million dollar simulators that we train on do not fly exactly like the real airplane so you've got if you hold a 40 dollar add-on to a 40 million dollar jet you think it's gonna you're gonna get upset when it doesn't fly like within 1.5 percent of this profile like i get it we strive for excellence i don't want to use that as an excuse don't want to twist my words, but you got to make sure that you have a little bit of realism, realistic expectations in there as well. I think we're we're gonna have a problem here. We'll see. All right, is he gonna take us all the way west? Oh, this is sweet. Almost a tail strike on pushback. Actually, not really geographically inverted. Look at that. Look how much clearance we have. So the Embraer 190 cockpit is higher off the ground than a 737, and it's actually closer to an A320. The, it sits at a... It, it's got kind of a weird stance. If you ever look at an Embraer 170 or 190 on the ground, it's like it's not completely level, <laughs> but there is plenty of, uh, plenty of clearance. I did, uh, I did set up for wet speeds, Alex. I did. So uh, we verified them. I'll go here to my... Uh, departure oh, i'm sorry my manifest we ran we ran uh, dry and wet both on flaps too uh and with this particular runway man it's 12,000 feet long so uh there's no difference here between wet and dry so we verify 26 32 43 26 32 43 3.9 3.9 ecs on that all checks out so we're good there but yes you do want to you do want to make sure you check now i'm curious what if we just um I'm gonna I'm gonna try wet and then what can I clear these? I'm gonna just see. Okay, no, so that's good. It should say wet somewhere. Maybe not. Normally, I think it would say wet or not there. I'll definitely purchase at least the 190 when VNAV is implemented. Captain McGee, I hear you, man. You'll enjoy it. You'll definitely enjoy it. Here's here's one of here's. Something I really want to point out as well. Look what we've look what I have found, chat. So I'm going to move this to heading. Look at my heading. I'm moving it with my uh, hardware. This is going to make such a difference with 
uh, with flying the airplane. I can do it with that. I can do it with altitude. Let's set our top altitude of, what do we say? What are we going up to? I forget. 21? What was our cruise out there? I don't remember. Two three zero. All right, and to get to hundreds, you click on the little hun they tick on the little arrow there, and go. Oops. Oop. There we go. Now we're back into uh, thousands. Is that a seven two? Oh my! Hold on, chat. Check this out. Windshield wiper on. Look at that 727 Continental over there. Whoever our Phantom 727 driver is, you're awesome. Windshield wiper is about as good as an Airbus wiper. It doesn't really do all that much. <laughs> Liam, it looks, think about it, that cockpit may look tiny to you, but that's actually a very large cockpit for a regional jet. Go sit in a E145 and tell me, uh, tell me the 170 cockpit is, uh, is small. Ooh, uh, center's on twenty four decimal one. All right, we'll uh, we'll call center. We got we're on Iveo today, so I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, twenty four one over here, twenty four decimal one before we start up. Center, good afternoon. Mercury three fifty seven on the ground, Honolulu. I'd like to pick up our IFR clearance to you, all, please. Mercury 3 Mercury 3 uh, Break set. We're going to stand by for start until we get our clearance. BKG Blue Fez D1, are you staying on the 320 or another type? Oh, I'm staying on the 320, my man. These are, We're going blast from the past. We're going blast from the past. I flew these jets before the 320. The Embraer 170 190 was my first uh, 121 airline type rating. So one, in the United States, 121 refers to airline operations. Um, and that was my first uh, airline type was uh, I actually got my ATP my airline transport pilot license uh, on this jet I don't have flight sim installed and now you fly Hawaii zippy good to see you man do you want to accept it December from Envoy that's why he's flight. doing this uh, hey right there's that I actually uh, I was, uh, I did at one point in my career. I returned it. Did not go, but I, I almost went. Almost went there. Ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck, welcome aboard Flight 357 service over to uh, Hilo. I think that's where we're going, PHTO, wherever it is. Uh, just going to be a few minutes around the taxiway with the weather moving in here. We've got to get a reroute from aircraft control. Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened. Thank you for your patience. Uh, so we're going to stand by until we get our clearance uh, from control here. Do <coughs> you want to ever fly the CRJ-200? No, I never flew the Pooh-100. My FO today, though, he spent like 10 years on the CRJ-200. Great dude. Had a lot of fun. Great pilot. Uh, and we were swapping some old uh, war stories back and forth on the old regional days. But, uh, you know, I never flew the 200. I thought I was going to die in a CRJ-200. There were three times I thought I was going to die in my career. Uh, I was once in the back of a CRJ-200, once in the back, or no, on the jump seat of a CRJ-200, once in the back of a CRJ-200, uh, and once in the back of a dash trash. What are the short dashes that uh, Piedmont used to have? Those were the times I thought I was going to die when I was not flying. At two other times I thought I was going to die when I was flying. We already talked about those on the podcast. Prim, Primic, Primic, thank you for the 20 pound donation, man. I appreciate you. That's a very kind of you. He says, are you back on Vatsim or is this still I veil? Love your channel. I've been a secret watcher for a while now. Well, I appreciate you uh, to getting a message in here, and I really appreciate that super chat. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. I am on Iveo. We're on Iveo today. This is uh, uh, Iveo traffic and the MTL models that you see here. Uh, Mercury Stand by. All right, we're ready to copy Mercury 357. I have to look it up too. 
Radar vectors pulled, stern is filed. Climb maintain 5000, expect flight level 19001, Chairman, set departure. Departure frequency 124.1, squawk 3742. What did he call it? The Mocha Lie? Oh, Key Lie? Key High? And for Mercury 357, can I just confirm that sit again? Was that, did you say the Key High 3? Negative, it's uh, the low Key 5 departure. Ah, I see now. Okay, Mercury 357, we're cleared to the uh, Papa Hotel Tango Oscar Airport via the Molokai 5 departure. Uh, then as filed, climb maintain 5,190 in 10. Departure is 24.1, squawking 3742 for Mercury 357. What was the departure transition? I don't remember what it was. Pulps. Mercury 357, read back is correct. The Honolulu Altimeter is 3016 on 8 left when you're ready to taxi the out. All right, eight left. We'll give you a call. Ready taxi, uh, Mercury 357. All right, so a couple things we need to change here. Let's come back into the box. We need to first squawk 3742. 3742. Uh, we're going to go up to 190. We're on the right departure. we got to go route. We're going to go departure. We're going to change the runway. Eight left now. Sorry, A Rock. Local I 5. Pulps. Apply. Flight plan. That looks good. USR MKK 5. 5,000 initial. So let's go ahead and set 5,000 on our altitude here. All right, uh, cleared to Hilo, Molokai 5, departure, pulse transition, then as filed, climb 5,000. What's interesting uh, is like it wants... We'd like to amend our altitude to 19029 was a little aggressive for that. Um, 24.1 for departure, squawking 3572, and departures with you for uh, flying. All right, 5,000 is set. We're going off 8 and left so now. We'd really like to get the uh, right takeoff. Uh, uh, oh, he's going to get the 8 right? Are you getting the 8 right? If he gets eight right, I'll go back to eight right. right one nine zero after uh, five minutes, uh, ten minutes after. Uh, and yeah, did you get a request? We'd like to do the eight right if we can. If he gives it to him, I'll ask. six forty seven one attach you to eight departure. He's like, why do you want to go all the way down there? <laughs> uh, six forty seven. Uh, we're ready to move. Uh, Okay, uh, house 47, hold position for now. I need to squawk 3572 first. <laughs> Alright, we'll go off 8 left. Screw it. We'll go off 8 left. Alright, 8 left, Molokai 5, 5000 right, is set. And uh, we got our new departure. We're all looking good. Let's start engines, chat. Here we go. Real easy to start. Everything's on, everything's normal. Beacon oh, is on. Should have had that on before pushback. Let's go. Starting them up. Number one. Here we go. All right, eight right via Julia. Cross eight left uh, to Alpha. We've got uh, 3016 in the box line. Six right seven. I thought he said low key five, but you're on. I thought I was like, what SID is that? I don't have my super juice views bound on this jet. I have it only on the 175. I got to I gotta reset my CFG, so that's all right. I mean, how juice is this though? Look at this sim. All right, again, side note, Microsoft Flight Sim weather, dynamic environment, how cool is this? We start up at the gate, the sun was shining on our beautiful Mokalele E170, and now by the time we push back and start, we're overcast and rain. I love Flight Sim, man, this is so much fun. What's the verdict on the state of the E-Jets, Matt B? I'm having a ton of fun. If you are how do, I, how do I word this? Because this question is going to come up a lot. I don't want to sound like I am being derogatory for those that don't want to buy it if without VNAV. So I'm trying to figure out how I can say... If you are... If you are, I guess I can just say, if you are okay flying a jet without VNAV implementation, I don't see why you wouldn't enjoy this jet. There we go. Because I, I don't want to, I don't want to dog on people who don't want it because it's with their weight on VNAV. I totally understand that. Um, 
now, like on me, on this channel, I mean, we try to fly everything without being at. We fly Lear 35s, and hell, I want to fly a 727 for a month if we had one. So, uh, it's it's harder. It, it You need to be a little bit more engaged with the bird, with the airplane. And I'm going to go over some of that here. The real key lessons that we're going to get when we get into climb and cruise, because we need I need to explain to y'all speed on elevator, speed on thrust, how the aircraft is going to manage its energy in both states so you can kind of understand how to manipulate the guidance panel to properly keep this airplane in a normal phase of flight and, and, and a, keep it out of an undesirable aircraft state. I'm learning how to fly without VNAV right now. Heck yeah, Rusty. It's a very good for those who know what they're getting into. That's a great way to put it, Kyle Lewis. I'm almost there to buy e-jets. All right, sounds like we've got two good starts. All right, two good starts. Uh, I'll wait for the overhead flow. We're gonna do flaps two. So on the Bravo, I have to like double tap my uh, flap lever. Slats are coming down. Flaps are coming down. Zippy, you didn't know I had coffee mugs? Heck yeah, man. Oh no, I have my alerts muted. I do, I do. Did I miss something? Matthew Kelly. I did, I'm sorry. Matthew Kelly, let me get to this. Uh, let's go, APU's coming off. Everything else looks good. Matt Kelly, I just bought my V1 type rated coffee mug. Thanks for all the weekend after hour streams. I finally don't have to keep watching on replay. Matthew Kelly, thank you so much for that $5 super chat. And I'm glad that you picked up a V1 type rated coffee mug. Make sure you put some pictures in the Discord when you get it. Uh, sometimes they take a little while to ship, just I am aware of that. And I would like to eventually bring merch in-house and do my own thing, but there's just so much going on right now. But I appreciate you for picking a mug up, Matt Kelly. We're gonna have to have a mug club. I think we're gonna have the V1 mug club. All right, here we go, flight control checks. We're going full right, full left, back, left, forward. Oh yeah, I love the fly-by-wire on this, uh, or fly-by-wire, force feedback. We'll get up the cam here so you can kind of see what I was doing. So I did my, I mean, it's just so smooth. I'll do it again. Roll it, the pressure, just juice. All right, and we're 3.9 on the trim, so right about there, 3.8, that's fine. Sometimes uh, the jet has a tendency to lift the nose up just a tad early, so I'm fine with one one shot below. We'll go auto brakes to RTO, APU spooling down. We're ready to taxi. We've got information alpha. Let's get out of here. And Honolulu ground to the Mercury 357 ready taxi. Mercury 357, one for uh, We're all set up for eight left uh, now, Mercury 357. Mercury 357, right early, eight left taxi alpha. 8 left taxi via Alpha, Mercury 357. All right, 8 left via Alpha. I think we are uh, somewhere over here. Short of, uh, eight rate, ready to go. So we got to find Alpha. Let's go. J. J. Stevens, thanks so much, man. Appreciate you. Why don't you set the easy view outside the cabin? You can do it without editing. I'll post in Discord. JJ, that, I would love to know that, man. Normally, I just edit that one CFG file, and then I reload it. I don't have to restart the sim, but i got to reload the jet. Um, if you have a way to do it, let me know, man. Appreciate the $5 super chat. Does it keep the inside sounds, though? That's what I want. I don't want exterior view. I want inside, uh, inside view. All right, that was a little much there. I'm used to taxiing a heavily loaded 321. We were super, super heavy 321 today. Had to actually juice it. Are we on alpha? I don't think we're quite on Alpha yet. I don't see any signs though. Maybe we are on Alpha. Check the MMEL, it can be dispatched, VNAV in op in real life, Zachary J, it sure can. I flew this airplane with no autopilot, no auto thrust for four legs one day up and down the East Coast. That was fun. Yeah. It can sure sure can be dispatched with no uh, VNAV. Thanks, a -Rot. Gotcha. All right, we're going to slide. 
that's alpha there. So we're going to come off the ramp. We're going to join alpha. That is a Mokalili livery, AFO, and it's a real one, so stop laughing at me, AFO. It was operated by Shuttle America, three jets, Mokalili, baby. It's not fictional. <laughs> A-Rod, I read your message and said, I'm a dead captain. I was like, wait a second, what? Dead captain PFD screen, oof. Not good. Four leg day with no autopilot. That will definitely put hair on your chest, Stephen. Uh, I don't need any more. All right, up to passing uh, 1400 for us. Uh, Alliance 3000. So the problem is the way my camera is set up now, when I reach for my tiller, I have to reach around the camera. It's really uncomfortable. I can sneak my arm under here. Nope, can't do that. All right, now I think I can. There we go. Uh, Zachary J, though, thanks. Appreciate the two-liner super chat, man. Kind of you, very kind. Thank you. The captain's PFD was dead. Yeah. Do you think this bird can be flown on Vats and Ave without much issues, Ryan Lee? As long as you understand how to how to manage this aircraft in its vertical oh, modes, absolutely. Oh no, we're about to collide with the fuel truck. Look away. And Zippy, I know there's people saying, "Oh, well, what about busy constraints?" I will find a very busy event this weekend. This week, I'll fly. I'll fly into something probably PM because that's when the U.S. is on a lot. I will fly this jet into the heart of one of like the most busy airspace I can find, and I will show you that you can easily fly this jet on a network. It's easier than the F-28, way easier, way easier than the 146. You have an auto throttle, you have an autopilot, all you have to do is manage the energy state of the aircraft and the vertical profile with use of either flight path angle, vertical speed, or fly level change. You flew it into Frankfurt on Friday? Nice, Zippy. All right, so let's start narrowing it down. We're going to get into this conversation here. The first thing you need to understand is the proper takeoff modes. So you can see my PFD. We have no flight director on right now. So there's a couple things we need to do. One, we got our altitude set, 5,000. All right, with that set, I'm going to go here and I'm going to press the toga flight director button. So now I have my toga flight directors, 10 degrees, roll TO. The only thing that I do not have up here is I do not have any auto thrust armed. I need to get the auto thrust armed. To arm the auto thrust, I'm going to press the AT button. This is your normal FMA for takeoff. TO, roll or heading, I think you could be at heading too. LNAV armed and TO. So what's going to happen, the auto thrust, just like in the real aircraft, once you advance the thrust levers, I think it's a TLA or 60%, the auto thrust will then grab the physical levers and then bring them forward, all right? Once you see TO go green, where are we here? Are we going the right way? Oh, we gotta make a turn here. Um, once you see the TO go green, that means that auto thrust is now active, all right? So that's the first step in understanding how to get this jet uh, doing the things you want it to do is you got to understand the proper FMA for takeoff and how to properly arm it. Now you got to be careful here. Normally you don't arm the TO until you're on the runway. I think that could be an airline SOP because if you're in a tight turn here, not that you would get to 60% in one, but if for some reason you inadvertently triggered the auto thrust to engage and you're on a taxiway, you could easily override the throttles in the real jet because you can see I'm moving, you grab and pull them back and disconnect them. But just not a good idea to have the engines wanting to go to Toga when you're on a taxiway. So 60% is your limit before it captures. All right, we're going to go, that's at Victor. This is at Alpha here, kind of a funky uh, intersection. 
All right, now this is, hopefully we have a minute here before he clears us to go. <clears throat> One of the easiest functions of the E-Jet in the real bird is the use of FMS speeds. FMS speeds means that the speed bug will automatically jump up to the appropriate speed for the appropriate phase. So you're in your takeoff and your V2 plus 10 or whatever it's pitching for, VFS, and then your climb out speed. Or you can pre-select a climb out speed even and it'll go to that. Without FMS speeds, which we do not have, they're not modeled yet, you have to manually control your speed bugs because if it's defaulted to 180 and we're climbing out, 181 is uh, VFS, the auto thrust may start rolling back because it's going to try to maintain 180 depending on what other vertical mode you are in. So you want to be Johnny on the spot here with the speeds. I'm going to pre-select 210, but I think it might actually limit me when the, we take off because the flap limit. Uh, we'll take a look at it here. But you, if you can, you really want to have this bound to some hardware. It's going to make your life way easier. All right. Now, just before I get a takeoff clearance here, the two main modes I want two main modes for for climbing and descending. We have speed on elevator and speed on thrust. We'll talk about both in detail. But for the takeoff, I want you to watch this. Speed on elevator in a roundabout way, it's not exactly, but in a roundabout way, speed on elevator is most similar to a flight level change mode on a 737 or an open climb or an open descent on an Airbus. What speed on elevator means is that the aircraft is going to control the speed with the elevator and the given thrust. So if we have the appropriate amount of thrust we got climb one thrust, right? We got our climb thrust is set. Our thrust is now fixed at climb power. The airplane will pitch for speed. So if you were to roll the speed tape up, the airplane is going to use the elevator to lower the nose, lower the angle of attack to increase speed to the next speed bug, right? It will protect you. It is the most protective mode, really. So you, it's, you can stall it on speed on elevator, but technically it's to protect you from really making a mistake too. So speed on elevator is your most common mode here for takeoff. So pay attention to that. We may see a speed on throttle. We'll talk about that here in a minute. All right, let's go. And Honolulu, Mercury 357, holding short eight left, ready for departure. Departure flight heading 060, runway 08, clear for takeoff of Mercury 357. All right, heading is selected to 060. I got my speed bug primed up, ready to roll. We'll get the rest of our lights on. Let's go. Uh, Zach Lewine, it's like IAS mode. I, 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 you can say like, yes, but I want you to think of it as its own thing here. That this is where a lot of confusion will set in if I start saying, oh, it's just like this Can mode. Take off clearance. Uh, yeah. Cancel takeoff clearance, Mercury 357. We're holding short of eight left. Okay. Brake set. Cancel takeoff clearance. Zero six zero is in the mountains. Maybe we should take a look at the chart here. Let's let's actually try to be some, do some pilot stuff here. Where is our SID? Molokai five, the low key five. We need to go, not left. <laughs> All right, we're two two seven on the departure flight one right. Correction on departure flight and one three zero the one 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 zero one zero gusting one nine when you left please take off. All right, on departure, fly heading 130, runway 8 left, cleared for takeoff, uh, Mercury 357. All right, so 130, spin that sucker over to 130. I'll give him a minute to think about it before we cross the whole short line. Just give him a double check. He's not, he's not, uh, 
giving me a whole lot of confidence. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I had a controller try to drive me into a mountain. All right, here we go. So much for our juicy uh, views and looking at the islands. That's all right. Guys, if you like this content, please smash down that like button for takeoff. Let's get more likes than views on this video. Everybody hit that like button because what that means, it's not just for me, chat. It's for y'all. If you like seeing e-jets, if you like seeing stuff that we don't always fly on the channel here, smash the like button because that puts it in the algorithm and that lets me know you want to see more of that content. So two things, smash the like button, yoga's in chat. Let's go. And I'm going to do this from inside. We'll spool them up here just momentarily. And I want to show you the, the symbology from inside. So we'll be, we'll be real pilots on this one. All right. So power, uh, we're spooled up. Advance the thrust levers. There we go. My TO is green. AT is green. Takeoff, auto thrust is active. So we're TO1 on the ICAS. Airspeed's alive. Throttle hold at 60 knots. Definitely a nice little cross one here. Oh jeez, we're not a V1 yet, I thought we were a V1. Alright, there we go. Work out that aileron roll, nice and gentle on the rotation. Positive rate, gear up. We're tracking, I'm gonna fly with two hands like I did on my videos. Airbus, we always have the hand on the press levers. Alright, don't freak out there, the flight director does a little weird thingy majigger. We're gonna go 400 feet, and now we're gonna select heading mode. So I'm going to select heading. So now we are TO heading. Watch that pitch. Thousand feet. We're going to speed on elevator heading flight level change. Mercury 337 in Honolulu departure radar contact south passing remote Passing 1.6 for 5,000 in the turn heading 130 Mercury 357. Mercury 337 in contact climbing Climb right, climb to 10, zero, ten thousand. Turn right, heading one five zero. Mercury three fifty seven. Oh, that's the trim in motion. All right, one five zero. Climb to ten thousand. There's. Let's go ahead and start. That's from uh, passing two point six for one zero ten thousand. Mercury three fifty seven. All right, pitch up if you see that speed tape going amber. I'm going to bring that bring that pitch up because if we're speed on elevator and I'm in control of the elevator what's gonna happen will we overspeed yes we will because the airplane's saying hey your speed on elevator you need more elevator pitch to lower that speed now that our flaps are up our speed tape is gone I'm gonna bug up to 250 knots now so speed on elevator you can definitely overspeed if you're flying the jet All right, so the goal of the flight director, flight director Q here is to match them up just like we have here. So we've got the flight path vector and we've got the flight director Q in magenta. And you want to just, you want to put the f right in the middle of the hole there and you want to get that, if you're perfectly on it, you'll see the wings kind of split the Q. So that's where she's at. I'm going to use a little bit more trim here. Mercury 337, Direct Direct uh, Molkai for uh, Mercury 337. All right, so we'll go come down here. We're gonna go to our flight plan, and we're gonna track MKK, put it right there, and nav. So now we're LNAVIN, flight level change. Look at the speed mode, we're still what? Speed on elevator, so I'm pitching up too much, my speed's diminishing, right? Thrust isn't doing anything. I have to control the speed with the elevator when I'm the pilot flying. As we uh, rotate around here, I'm going to keep sinking my heading bug up. All right, there's 250. Let's go ahead and get back to our 250 knot pitch attitude. It was about 11, 12 degrees, something right around there. Taking a look at my wind 
slightly from the right, so I don't want to be too aggressive with my intercept here. 1,000 a level off. Level one nine or zero Mercury three fifty seven. All right, nineteen one is set. All right, there we go through ten thousand feet. I'm gonna bug up here two hundred and seventy knots. Two hundred and seventy knots. Our LNAV path is coming in. We're out of ten. I need to fix the altitude there. My Bravo sometimes throws in a hundred feet. So clip the up arrow on the altitude scroller there. See that little arrow pops up. And then you can manipulate it hundreds of feet. All right, so now we can lower the nose. We're gonna to continue to accelerate. And I'm gonna engage the autopilot for ease of uh, training purposes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and engage AP1. We'll make sure our profile's working here with our new Bruner. So we've got AP on. So let's pay attention. Speed on elevator, the autopilot's engaged. We're in flight level change mode. So the autopilot is now in fixed thrust at climb two of 83.2, 83.4% 83 and one. It's gonna give us that and it's gonna fix it and then the elevator is gonna control our speed. So, demonstration. If I were to, see how, the, look at our vertical speed, we're going up 1,500 feet. I'm gonna increase the speed. Look, what's the elevator doing? It's going down, because we're speed on elevator. So the elevator is controlling the pitch. I hope we've hammered that home from now. Line I'm going to wind it back 270 knots. Uh, ILS, I believe Look at the pitch increase. See that? Uh, let me get it's going up there to grab ILS it. Uh, so this is very similar to if we are in an open climb in the Airbus and you are in managed speed at, say, 330 knots. You're doing cost index 99. And then you need to get out of some turbulence. What are you going to do? We don't hit the expedite button. We select speed, run the indicated speed back, and the airplane is going to pitch for that new indicated airspeed mode, right? So, very similar, but I want to try to eliminate uh, me saying, oh, it's like an Airbus or like a Boeing as much as I can, but I'm just trying to get that point across. But when you're in the E-Jet, you want to make sure you're using E-Jet terminology and understanding how this jet works. All right, so resync the heading bug. We're 270. We're 14 for 19,000. A couple other things we can do here. I'm going to go to TRS. Yeah, gonna I'm going to select climb one rain. thrust. It's going to give me a little bit more juice, all right? Climb one. Hear the engine spool up. It's going to give me more fixed thrust, which means I'm going to do what? If I'm speed on elevator, if I'm fixed thrust, and I've just increased the thrust, the elevator's got to move, give me better climb rate. So now we're climb one. We're coming 15 to 19,000, and we are looking good. Does the flight, why does the flock director change from cross, which you, can you keep at the cross? Rex, no, you cannot keep at the cross. That is the normal takeoff logic of the flight director. So you have that pitch, you want it, you need that cross bar. I think you can have the V flight director too, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure we had the cross bar, but I'm pretty sure you could either have the cross bar or uh, the, uh, uh, that V, v the, uh, style flight uh, director. But you have to have that for takeoff because you need a takeoff pitch attitude reference. At 1,000 feet, it will change to the flight director Q. And that is the normal mode on the Embraer. That's how it is. That's how the real jet is. And that's what they do. Uh, that flight director cross is probably for the Boeing guys that were in testing. Like, hey, we can't, we can't pitch up to a flight director Q. We need to just have the crossbar. So um, I don't know. I don't know the reason why they didn't give you a flight director Q to, to take off pitch. But whatever it is, it doesn't matter. That's how the airplane is modeled. That's what you got to learn to fly, uh, fly it by. There's 18K. We'll hit 29 or 9 or 2. 1,000 feet to level off. AROT says my sim. Oh, no. Uh, I haven't seen the V. Okay, I haven't. Maybe I'm, I could be mistaking. Maybe the V doesn't exist. Uh, maybe I have. Uh, maybe I'm getting conflicting information because we're flying the CRJ. Uh, I will tell you from my experience, oh, I only saw the cross and then the flight path vector right, with the flight uh, director Q, the mini bird. All right, we're leveling one nine or zero. We are in A cell, altitude select. So we've selected 19. The aircraft is in its level off mode, similar to Altstar in the Airbus. But remember, we're in the E jet. Let's use a proper termination. We're in A cell, altitude select. 
leveling off at flight level 190. I'm going to maintain speed 270 uh, because we don't want to be ripping on this flight. Uh, we also need to get our lights off. Our first officer didn't do a very good job on that. We'll get all those off. Uh, we'll go ahead and ding the flight attendants. We'll leave the sterile light on because it's a short flight. There is still no VNAV. That is correct, Sebotopia, but we're going to talk about, we're talking vertical modes right now because there is no reason to be afraid of no VNAV. And maybe afraid is the wrong word here, but so now we're in out. So we are out mode. Out means you are leveled off. The jet is level. We're altitude hold that one nine or zero. Beautiful. Happy days. And there she is, one nine or zero. Oh man, this is going to be tough to be inside on this whole flight because I just want to look at juice. Okay, let me chug some water, and now we're going to get into the next vertical mode, which we're going to demonstrate here in the descent. Rex, the bird, yes, the bird is by default on and always on. So you see the green, this is called the flight path vector, this is the bird. The magenta bird is actually the flight director Q, I think by correct terminology, it's the FDQ. Is the magenta, the FPV, flight path vector, the bird, and it's always on, it's on by default, it's how this jet operates. All right, sync our heading bug up, heading sync. Okay, now that we've hit on speed on elevator, take a look at our F uh, FMA, column one, our auto thrust column. What do we have now? We have speed on T. What the hell is speed on T? Speed on thrust, okay? Uh, you can say speed on throttle because it's an auto throttle, but technically the correct term is auto thrust. These are thrust levers. So I've made the mistake, I've said it, but the proper way to say it is auto thrust. And we are speed on thrust mode, all right? So with speed on thrust, Instead of the elevator controlling the speed of the airplane with a fixed thrust setting, what, can, what do you think speed on thrust is gonna be? If you said, well, the th speed has to be on the thrust levers now, you would be correct. The thrust is now the, what the airplane is going to use to control its speed. Uh, yeah, Barrow Ref, we set standard. We're standard here. Hawaiian 647, turn right heading 125, vectors for the BOR DME uh, approach runway uh, 8. BOR DME approach, hold on, let me throw this in the box here. Alright, uh, heading 125, and uh, we'll expect vectors to the uh, BOR to uh, runway 8. Runway 8, approach, there is no approach. I tell you what, we're going to do the ILS-8 circle. Or we're going to do the ILS-26 and circle, because we're going to hand fly it. Uh, they fixed direct twos and stars and sids. Yes, you do have direct two uh, on final. You can do direct two. You saw me do a direct to MKK. Now, I did it without thinking about it, but A-Rot, since you're here, A-Rot's a current 170 driver, so he's he's definitely way more proficient on this aircraft than I am. When you do a direct two, so I say I want to go direct bonus here, I copy it and you place it at the top, right? MKK, you always want to bring it to the top of your flight plan. That is your present position direct two. I think that's what we did earlier. If you bring it to pulps, I think it does something else. But yeah, it's one LS key, all right? No, it wasn't letting me change. The, is there an approach for, uh, let me check real quick. Is there an approach for runway 8? What's our airport identifier? PHTO. PHTO. Wow, is there like a uh, window shade? <laughs> Need a window shade over here. Oh, what? Uh-oh. How do I get you back? Come back. <laughs> That's a fancy EMV holder. 
Uh, view all, there is no approach to PHTO. It's on the database. All right, yeah, there's no, there is no approach there. So we're gonna do the ILS two six will circle. It'll be that'll be the juice. But we're probably gonna botch up the approach anyway because the whole point of this flight is understanding the speed mode. So back to speed on throttle or speed on thrust. So if speed's on thrust, and I were to increase my thrust, or sorry, increase my speed request to 290 knots, what's going to happen? The thrust has to increase. Look at the thrust. Hear the thrust increase? What happens if you command a speed that the thrust is not giving you in enough time? I think there's a limit, A-Rock, you could tell me what that limit is, but you will get that amber limb up here, meaning that the thrust levers are at their limit or the thrust production is at the limit. We've got all the thrust we got, Captain, and we're trying to get you to your selected speed. At 190, not so much of an issue. If we were up at 350 and say we were doing 72 Mach and we wanted to accelerate to 79 Mach, air is much thinner, the engines are much, uh, or it's going to take much longer time for us to accelerate from 71 or 72 to 79 Mach at 35,000 feet. You'll see the thrust levers go into their max power position for that for that thrust and it's going to go limb t meaning we are at the limit on throttle or a limit on thrust descend to maintain a one one thousand three zero one eight in the box we'd like to do the ils two six circle to land zero eight for mercury three fifty seven all right roger expect the ils approach zero eight two six for the circle line eight all right, we'll expect that Mercury 357. Limb just means you're at full throttle and the speed bug is still above you and the plane thinks it can make it. It still can make it. It's just complaining or vice versa. Exactly. So it's letting you know you've commanded something that it hasn't made yet and it's given you all it's got. All right. So now that we know that on speed on throttle mode, the thrust levers control the speed. So pop quiz. If I were to select, since I've selected 11,000 here, I'm gonna slow down. I'm gonna slow to 250 because I really wanna stretch this out as long as possible. Will we get a limb at idle? Let's see. I'm gonna select 250 knots. Look at that, power's coming back. Airplane's mad, a limb, speed on throttle is armed. There we go, speed on thrust. Now she's coming back, all right? We're gonna reach our selected 250. So the pop quiz here, we're speed on thrust. If I select flight level change, what's gonna happen to the FMA column and the auto throttle? It's gonna go to, if you said speed on elevator, you'd be correct because flight level change is going to take our selected speed, flight level change it down. But I don't wanna do that. I wanna descend at a three degree path. So I'm gonna select a flight path angle of three degrees down. Take a look at my engines. Take a look at my FMA column. I've selected three degrees nose down, speed on thrust. Our thrust levers are controlling our speed. If I were to increase the flight path angle to, let's say we want to come down at five degrees and I was trying to slow down, the aircraft would honor the flight path angle and would start complaining saying hey we're at idle thrust limb I can't slow you down and go down at five six seven degrees flight path angle so this is a mode that can get you in trouble if you're complying with speed constraints because especially if you need to slow down you may not be able to slow down and go down. The E-Jet is a slippery jet. She does not like to slow down and go down. Your best bet is to slow early, then start your descent. Or start down fast, maintain that 270, 280, 290, get to that platform altitude, in this case it would be 11,000 feet, and then slow down. So I'm gonna show you an example. I'm going to change this to a flight level change descent here. You can see we're actually using power to maintain a three degree path. With this three degree path, the aircraft is only netting about 1700 feet per minute because we're still producing thrust. We're gassing it to go downhill. Not the most efficient, 
but can be very helpful if you're trying to meet a target altitude requirement. But in this case, we need to get down to 11. Let's stop wasting fuel. Let's go ahead and select flight level change, FMA column, speed on elevator, flight level change. Thrust coming to idle. Look at our vertical speed increasing rapidly because now the speed is controlled strictly on the elevator. So if I select a faster speed, what's going to happen? Just like in the climb out. Look at that. Thrust is going to stay at idle. We're just going to pitch for whatever we have selected in the speed window. I'm going to select 270. Look at that. Look at that descent rate. 4,000 feet a minute now. We are coming down. Now, may not be the easiest to slow down, especially the 170. The speed brakes are not that effective. All right, they are a little bit, but they're not like super effective. They're more effective if you're a level flight and you need to slow down. Yeah, pop them out. Um, they're better than nothing. They're better than a CRJ speed brake, better than the little eyelashes on the CRJ 200. But in general, with your E-Jet, you either need to slow down before you go down, or you need to just hurry up and get down and then slow down. That's going to be your most, that's going to be the easiest method for you. So we're approaching 11,000 feet here for fun. Let's see if we can select 250. Now look at that. See, look at that. It's going to shallow that rate of descent out. So if you want to smooth out that transition from descent to leveling off, roll that speed back just prior. And she's trying. She's barely slowing from 260 to 250 here. She's trying, but like I said, she's just a little bit slippery. So speed on elevator, gonna be very effective for you if you wanna come fast, or you wanna, you wanna come downhill fast, and you don't wanna have to worry about, uh, you know, blowing through any restrictions, or if you, if you don't have any other restrictions. Flight path angle is gonna be more precise because we can calculate descents on a three degree path. Flight level change is basically easy mode. It's like, okay, I screwed up my mental math. Flight level change, 290 knots, boards out, come on down. You know, the finesse, the, the, the finesse doctor pilot will be up here with the FPA looking at the DME, like, okay, I'm gonna finagle it and just bang on every altitude. But when you're getting started out, that flight level change, probably gonna be your best friend. As we level though, what happened to FMA? Speed on thrust, we're out cell, 11,000 feet, 250 knots. Hot shot, the $5 super chat, man. Thank you so much. When you have a chance, I have something really cool for you to listen to Ooh, in the V1 Discord. You will love it. Hot shot, I will check it out, man. I'll check it out on the turnaround. We're going to do a turnaround leg on this stream. You guys want to see a turnaround? We'll go back in non-teaching mode. We'll just do a return leg in juice mode so we can enjoy the scenery, shoot and approach. And I don't think we've ever done a turnaround in this jet. So we'll see what happens. We'll be a good bug test. We'll keep everything up. We'll just do a real-time turnaround, see what happens. All right, I've been, uh, but Hotshot, I appreciate that $5 super chat, man. Hey, you need to save that for flight chain. Hotshot is banned from, uh, from super right, chat. Final, if you're in flight training, uh, if you're a flight student, <laughs> save that money. I appreciate the support. Pilot discretion 8,000 for Mercury 357. All right, now I'm going to show you how you get in trouble when you try to be fancy. So we're going to select 8,000. What's your speed limit below 10,000 feet, chat? Everybody should know. Oop, not 8, 9. What's going on here? There we go, 8,000. Speed limit below 10 is what? 250 knots, right? So let's say, let's just say we're cruising along 270 knots. There's our limb. I've got full juice. I'm trying, Captain. I'm trying. All right, we got 270 knots. Now she's coming back. Ooh, look at me. I'm fancy R jet driver. I'm going to calculate my descent perfectly. I'm going to select flight path angle right now, and I'm going to drive it on down to 8,000 feet at my perfectly calculated ground speed times 5, 3.7 degree flight path angle. We're speed on throttle. Okay, I need to go 250 knots. I'm going to select 250 knots because I'm a smart pilot, and I'm going to go through 10,000 feet with speed on throttle. Hmm. Limb. Speed on throttle. Why aren't we slowing down? Hmm. Ah, it's not slowing down. This airplane's bugged. I should be at 250 knots. I have 250 knots selected. It's bugged. 
No, it's not bugged. Your speed on throttle. The aircraft is honoring the 3.7 degree flight path angle down. It's trying to slow to 250 knots. But at this flight path angle with no speed brakes, really is not happening. We are violating 250 below 10. I'm going to throw in some speed brakes here to see if I can help her. I'm going to show you she's a slippery jet. So we got speed brakes coming full out, indicated here on the ICAS. I think it would be a little bit more up than that, wouldn't it? They're full up. All right. I just, I haven't seen a one, like I said, I haven't seen a 170 ICAS in a long time, but it's broken there. That means it's deflected. We're still struggling to get to 250 knots. So if you're on VATSIM and you're flying into Iveo right now, or, or if you're on VATSIM, you're flying into, oh, hold on. Uh-oh. Ooh, from the OCC. <laughs> Wrong side sim. Thanks for the $20 bank angle check, man. I appreciate you. From the OCC itself, man. Dude, why aren't you going to come fly with me, dude? For real, in real life, you need to come fly with me, man. Appreciate the support. We got it. Wrong side. I'm going to default to you for the... Uh, for the shared cockpit because I don't know how to do it on Microsoft, but I think you figured it out and I'd be more than happy to do one with you, man. I appreciate that massive $20 bank angle check. I appreciate you. So, Mercury 357, heading 110. Heading 110, Mercury 357. All right, 110, we're gonna select heading 110 and heading mode. Read the FMA, heading out, coming to 110. So. Back to what I was saying, if you're trying to do your super calculated flight path angle descent and you didn't allow time for deceleration and you're flying into a Friday night FNO on VATSIM, you're going to piss off some controllers because your jet's not slowing down and you're going right up the tailpipe of a CRJ200 that's doing 180 knots when, and you're doing 220 and you can't slow down. So you have to... You have to be aware of the limitations of your own jet. You have to be aware of the quirks of your own jet, and you have to take those into account, all right? The safest mode would be speed on elevator if you need speed first. If you get a descent from a controller and, they, and you say, hey, I don't know if we can make that altitude and that speed restriction, and they say, Brickyard 357, speed first, then altitude. In that case, I'm gonna select flight level change, which will be my speed on elevator. I'm gonna go full boards, and then I'm just gonna give it all she's got and flight level change, full boards, that's all you can do. If the, if the controller says altitude first, then speed, well then I can go ahead and I can do a couple things. I can go flight level change, and I could crank up the speed on elevator to 290 knots, 300 knots, whatever it is, and really start rocketing down. Or if you know exactly what angle you calculated, you don't have to worry about speed, just dial in that exact FPA, the three to one rule we calculate, and you can cross that fix, bang on altitude, and if you're a little fast, the controller gave you relief, then you can slow down after you level. So, gotta know the tools in your toolbox, and you gotta know what your aircraft is doing, you gotta know the logic behind your airplane. It's similar to Boeing and Airbus, but it's not a Boeing or an Airbus. This is an Embraer E-Jet, and you gotta understand the core functionality of what it's trying to do. Couple more super chats coming in here. Appreciate you, Fubar. Five dollar super chat, man. Appreciate you, V1. You are a great teacher. You make us better and smarter. Virtual pilots, how you always give us uh, the why and well as the how. Hey, Fubar, I appreciate that, man. That means a lot to me. Appreciate the five dollar super chat. Very kind, and uh, I just uh, it makes me happy, man. It, when y'all start picking up, even if. Even if just one of you in the chat picks up one piece of information from the stream, I consider it a success because that's all I'm trying to do is bring, share my knowledge with you to make your sim experience more enjoyable. So appreciate that. Wrong side said it's super easy. I'm off Tuesday, Friday, let me know. Ooh. All right, I'll let you know, wrong side. We'll, we'll have to do something, man. Kako, $5 bank, super chat, your 10th one on the channel. God bless. God bless, Kako. Hope you're doing well, man. Thanks for that bank angle check. Uh, the 220 won't let you manually override the throttles. If you pull them back like the 170, it will disconnect. That's your only gripe so far. Oh, wow, that is a gripe, man. You can't do throttle override. That's like the best part of the Embraer is throttle override. What about uh, if you need power? What if you can you can you push them forward or no? I, are they fixed? Because, you know, like on the Embraer, if you're getting a little bit slow, you can juice them up a little bit or hold that power. That's a great part about the Embraer. The Embraer's auto thrust system, I wish the Airbus had it, the way these thrust levers move. So like if you're on an approach and it's super windy, like we're getting bumped around here pretty good, and you know 
the airplane is going to like start sinking after you had a big gust of wind. Well, the auto throttle is going to kind of roll back because it's like, oh, I have all this performance, but you know you're going to need it. You can just put your hand right there and hold it and you'll get a throttle override and it will it will uh, really help your approach like be stabilized. It's just it's really nice to have that throttle override system. I really miss that on the uh, on the Airbus. Like wearing your seatbelt while it's seated, even if the seatbelt light is off. Yeah. All right, I need some more water. Koner at former. Long time ago, man. Definitely former. So I'm trying to dig into the memory bank. We got a couple of experts. So A-Rod's on them. Katko's been on it. We got some experts in the chat keeping me in check. But uh, I'm trying to just I'm trying to apply basic understanding this is not a type rating course on the Embraer this is just I want you to have basic understanding of the logics I want you to have basic understanding of the logic of this jet Kenoki no words just support Set to maintain 5,000 Mercury 357 Kenoki too kind appreciate the 12 euro bank angle check man very very kind or super chat all right what was that altitude can you say that out again for Mercury 357 I think he said five. Set to maintain five thousand Mercury three fifty seven. All right. I don't want to think about flight path angle. I want to go easy mode. Flight level change. Speed on elevator two fifty. Down we go, chat. FMA, FMA. Live and die by the FMA. Have fun at spicy, says Team Vodka. All right. Now here's a question for A Rod if he's still here, or maybe even Cacao. Um, I remember shooting a line or like making this, uh, like cleaning up the box. Number one, is it modeled? Number two, how do you do it? <laughs> I forget. I know there's a way, like maybe it's you take the final approach fix and put it up here. There's a way to what we call in the Airbus shoot a line. I forget how to do it in the Embraer and I don't even know if it's simulated, um, but I'm going to see if I can clean up the box. Okay, Aira says it's not modeled, so we'll just let it roll. That's fine. We'll let it roll. What is nice, though, is we have preview mode for the ILS. So the Embraer will uh, auto-tune your ILS and your localizer, and you can preview Mercury it. Mercury 357, direct Kens. Direct Kens and Mercury 357. We don't have Kens. Kens? Kens. Kens? What's Kens? Oh, he wants us from Ken's. Oh, geez. Uh, departure, arrival, runway 26, ILS 26 from Ken's. Boom, apply, flight plan, next page, Ken's, flight plan, top, execute. So there we go, we're navin direct Ken's. So if you want to see how I do that, just wind it back because I don't think I can do it again. <laughs> just kidding. So we had to reload the star, we had, excuse me, we had to reload the approach to the Ken's transition, and then we go direct to Ken's. And then make sure you hit LNAV or NAV because uh, <laughs> 20 minutes later having a conversation, be like, why are we five degrees or five, five miles off course? Oh, we never hit uh, NAV. Ask me how I know. It does happen. All right, we're LNAV to Ken's speed on throttle through speed on thrust, five thou, direct to Ken's. A lot of these auto flight mode functions the same way across different types, just no matter how they're implemented terminology. Tom, you're you're correct. You're absolutely correct. It's very similar, but I want to. I mean, you gotta understand that you don't. It's easy to just assimilate things, and then you can get you can find yourself down a wormhole that could get you in trouble. So, while it's good for broad understanding, saying, "Oh, this functions like the Airbus this," or "This functions like the Boeing this." It's good to get a basic understanding, but it, you really want to come back to, okay, so how does it really work here in this jet, in this scenario, in this scenario, and in that scenario? Because they're similar, but they're not exactly the same. Uh, let's see. Keiko says, you select, put top, and then you should extend the line. Okay. So if it's not simulated, we'll just we'll let, it, we'll let it go. We'll use the preview mode of the ILS, and we'll just go direct from there. 
back in 2013, there was a bug in the FMS where Adder above and Adder would drop. Yes. Oh, Kecko, I remember exactly that. I Dude, I remember that. <laughs> yes. The Adder aboves and Adder belows would drop. And yet I remember doing the, uh, what was like the Freedom? Freedom Arrival DC would drop out. I had it drop out in Baltimore. I remember one time specifically going into Baltimore, we were messing around the box, not messing around, but like trying to reprogram the box, get all just busy. And then we verified, looked at the altitude, we're like none of them were in the box. I'm like, oh my gosh. So there we go, FPA mode. That's when you get the FPA going. And then you can like see your vertical profile at the fix and try to cross it at a certain altitude. Off topic question, did your company purchase Expedite? Yes, we have Expedite. Um, we're not prohibited from using it, but nobody uses it. And uh, it's funny when someone wants to see what, what it is and they try it out. Uh, I've used it like three times. Once because I wanted to see what it did. Uh, the second time was an accident. <laughs> and the third time I was showing somebody demonstration, the Expedite push button. That's the only time, those are the only three times I've ever pressed the Expedite push button in the Airbus. Because you can accomplish the same thing with selected speed and you have more control over it. So it's good in theory, it's just like you got to know how to get out of it. That's the, big, that's the biggest thing. That's like if I fly with a new FO, I'm like, oh, can we try the Expedite? I just want to see it. Yeah, knock yourself out. <laughs> and then I got to be there on Johnny on the spot, make sure we don't freaking overspeed. It got you going into Denver, Cacao? <laughs> oh, man. Dude, do you remember? I feel like we used to do, like, some really late Chicago-Denver flights. I got a good podcast story for an experience I had. I was in FO, Chicago-Denver. We were delayed, like, three hours. And we were leaving Chicago, I want to say, either just past midnight or, like, close to one in the morning. And it was, like, a three... I don't know how long is that flight to Chicago Denver. It, it's just in the winter time with like a 180 knot headwind. So, yeah, I got a got a good story on one of those flights. Looking at these tools in the jet, it gives me respect for those engineers that designed and built in the first place. Absolutely, absolutely, Dale. Mercury 357, six miles from Cairns, cross Cairns, at or above 4,000. Cleared ILS runway 26, approach circle land runway. All right, cleared aisle, uh, cross Ken's at or above 4,000, cleared ILS 26, circle land runway 8 for Mercury 357. Ken's at or above 4, I want easy mode, flight level report change. Final we'll report on final for runway 8, uh, Mercury 357. I want easy mode, 4,000, so I'm flight level changing, speed on elevator, I don't even have to think about it. Let's go over here and I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about, auto-tune. We don't know, I don't know if it's actually going to tune in on this one, so we'll verify it. 110.7 and 259 is the final approach course. So if I hit the preview button here, it'll bring up localizer one. Localizer one is showing a course of 259 and 110.7, that checks out, 110.7 and 259. So I verified, I don't even need to tune anything in the box. This is the preview needle in real life. And I'm sure when this jet is finished, you can transition from FMS straight into the ILS. Um, we're not, I mean, oops, she's getting a little spicy on me right now. She wants to go over here. Let's select heading. Let's go direct Gavix. Oh, I see what's happening. There we go. I had additional fixes there. I had an additional fix. So now we're going Cabix, Seco, Wacky. Waikiki. All right, so we had an additional fix in the box there from the arrival. It was just an additional the, uh, initial approach point on the star. I wonder if that's because we reloaded the star. Okay, this is a known bug. Maybe not known, but I think it's known. Aaron said he had it too. I'm going to start slowing down too. We're going to come to 210. Um, but this is definitely not a game-breaking bug. You need to be aware of this. The Tolis got me violated on pilot edge for the very same issue changing sids and, or changing stars around and initial approach points around on the approach always verify what's the next two-way point look at your box look at your plan 
I noticed we started turning. I saw this thing do a weird thing. I never hit nav again. Dang it. Let's go ahead and re-nav it up. It's where L nav. Um, I noticed my FMS needle started doing something weird. Look here. It was doing something weird, but I knew we were able to diagnose it right away, and that was we had an extra fix in there. So get going back direct CABEX, re-engage L nav, get back on the course, make it look like you want it to look like. Don't be a passenger. You see your aircraft not doing something you don't want it to do, get in there and fix it. Don't sit there and look at it. Uh, crossing CBOB is 2,700 feet. Let's just go ahead and get on down. So I'm going to select altitude 2,000. I would do 3,000. And I, will, I wonder if you can bind the hundreds ticker. 2,700. Flight level change, easy mode. Once I get down to 2,700, we're gonna we're gonna slow it up. And we'll start configuring for the circle. You can transition from FMS to ILS without pressing VLOC as of now. Cool. So before we had that little uh, hiccup there, what I was going to say is, in this current state, we verified the localizer frequency. We verified the localizer course with the use of the preview needle. So in theory, the aircraft. Once we hit CABEX, I'll arm the approach. We should get glide slope white, a loc white. Actually, it'd be different. Loc would be here because that's the lateral column. Glide slope would be here. That's the vertical column. In white, we get an approach one. And as it picks up the signal, I don't remember the actual logic of when it would switch, but it will switch to localizer needle, and you'd be good to go and track. Now, one note I want to, another side note I want to share with you. In the real jet, uh, loc 1 should be green when you're flying loc 1. By default, the, uh, the FO is also on loc 1, so what's going to happen is my needle will not be green, it'll be amber. And while that's not wrong, amber just means you're both looking at the same source. You never want to both be looking at the same source because what if one of your pieces of equipment is malfunctioning? You don't want to just both look at the same malfunctioning glide slope or localizer antenna and go into the ground. So the first officer would be on loc 2. I'm going to go ahead and change him over right now to loc 2. That way when this transitions, I'll get green needle on loc 1. So that's a little bit of semantics, but that's if you wonder why you're getting yellow needles. You need to change the first officer's view to loc 2 because yellow is caution, caution. You're both looking at the same nav source. When do you ever do anything with no redundancy. You don't, unless you're Boeing. So you, uh, we want to make sure we have redundant here. Let's go auto brake low for the uh, circle too. All right, we'll go ahead and extend flaps one. And because I'm a new pilot, there's no need to be ripping in here at 210 knots. Let's slow it up, do 180 knots, get into the approach categories that we want to be in and we'll select flaps two, 180, speed on throttle, speed on, is it speed on, I wanna say it's speed on throttle, even though I know they're thrust levers. I feel like in the book it said speed on throttle. I don't know, I could be wrong. Cause I had a gripe with, maybe, I don't know, I forget. All right, anyway, we're speed on thrust. We're back to flaps two, 180. Where are we going here? Let's take a look. So our flight plan is getting a little bit funky. Let's fix it. Let's go flight plan. Waikiki, direct, that's the final. L nav. We're going direct to the final approach fix right now. And I'm going to select heading. And I'm going to arm the approach. So loc is white, glide slope is white, approach number one. Confirm active monitor intervene. Very good. Cami. AOM's to speed on thrust. All right, thanks, A-Rot. So, look, we had some possible LNAV hiccups with fixes in the box. It's nothing we can't we can't control or we can't uh, we can't not fix ourselves. Now we're getting a little bit high on profile. Why is that? Final approach is oh, Waikiki's 1800. So let's keep coming down. 1700, close enough. And fly level change. Come on down, baby. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Flight level change. Uh, 
I went I went to the two thousands. Alright, she's trying to go left. I'm gonna force it over to loke one. And I'm gonna reselect heading. Oh, there we go. She captured the loke. So little dodgy, but nothing you can't manipulate yourself as long as you are actively monitoring your jet. Once we turn here, we should be able to at least see where we're going, and then we're going to circle. All right, I can see the runway. Can we go flaps three? Flaps three, 180, and then we're going to circle. I'm going to sync my heading bug up. And I'm going to disengage the autopilot now. So autopilot's coming off. We'll leave the auto thrust on. And what we can do is we can turn off the flight director queue. Can I disengage? I was wondering if I can disengage that whole thing there. I guess not. Since we're all technically going to be going on a back course. Not even a back course, but we're extending a downwind here. I'm going to come back to 160 on the speed. I never did landing a knit. Let's see if we can really quickly... Go perf landing. Uh, oh my gosh, I don't know what the winds are. Landing and net one, one thirty three. We're just we're gonna rock with that. Oh brother, that's why you don't go heads down. <laughs> the guy in the jump, jump seat's wishing he took the next flight. Mercury 327, the one zero nine zero at one four, Delta two one, runway eight, quarter land. Runway eight, quarter land, Mercury 357. All right, so we're on downwind. Now there's just some good change crews. Good. Thanks for the ATC. I'll talk to you next time. All right, peace out. Take care. All right, so now this, this is another. This is one of the bugs that I've also determined. So like the flight path vector, is kind of locked out. So if I sync it. It seems to work, maybe, let's see. So like, this is where my flight path vector gets locked on out. Even though like, it, it shouldn't be. So that is definitely a bug that we've encountered multiple times. But when that happens, you just gotta be aware of it and make sure you're looking at your other instruments, like your vertical speed and your altimeter. So that is, that is one of the more serious bugs is that flight path vector lock because you can get like right now we're climbing my flight path vector says I'm descending so you really got to be um, you really got to be kind of watching that when that locks up I don't know why that is like if I hit flight director pitch sync you see how it like tries to tries to make it do the right thing alright we're on uh, nice little downwind here we're going to extend we're a little bit tight for my liking so we're gonna we're gonna extend out here we'll probably shoot through the final approach course as we make that turn and the, these engines are working I'm gonna go ahead and take control of manual thrust that's the ocean sir yeah almost that was a that was a United recreation there that's, that's what that was United triple seven off Honolulu recreation all right, we're 160, we're 2,000. We might be able to make that final turn. What did we say? 130, 133 for VAP. I'll bug it. And let's drop the gear and go on in. Gear down, turn it around. Here we go. Oh, I never got replay going. Oh, I can't see. It's blocking my whole screen. It's blocking my whole screen. It's blocking my whole screen. All right. <laughs> I will record this one. And on the return leg, we're just going to enjoy the juice. Because I'm getting tired of talking. <laughs> now, this is where you can get a really nice reverse sensing situation here. I forget, is there a back course button on the, uh... Let's 
bank limit. I guess not. All right, 2,000 feet. We're slowing down. We're flaps four, gear down. Like I said, we're going to shoot through the low here just a tad. We'll get back up on it. There's the runway. We'll extend flaps five. Flaps five is the normal landing configuration. Flaps full is another option. I think my Bravo, though, gets a little funky. I have to, like, double tap. Let's see, where are we at? I'm looking at that ICAST, looking for a flat five. There it is. Flat five, 133. We're a little bit fast. Runway's in sight. Recording is on. Prepare for landing, if you haven't already. But it is a little bit spicy coming down here. We got, it's definitely been gusty. Yeah, it's going to be a chill return, Dale. Very chill return. 1,000 feet, we're stable, clear to land. Now, I gotta say, I love the landing and the flight model this airplane has when you land it. It's challenging to land, and the reason it's so challenging for me is because I'm just not, I'm not used to it. But the more I practice, like, I can get good landings, but they, I gotta really focus on it. So I'm gonna try my best here. My biggest flop is I always flare too much like an Airbus too early. Got to drive her down and she'll settle down really nice but you really got to finagle her on. It's, it's a great feeling flight model in, in the flare. It really is. All right, we're two whites, two reds. A little bit fast. We're slowing down no to ref speed. We're looking good. A 16 knot quartering headwind. Definitely a little bit turbulent. I can feel it. Flyer down now, flyer down. 50, 40, not yet, 40, not 50, yet. 20, now. 10. Oh, that's the one. That's the one. Fly that nose down, I dropped it too soon. Auto break off. We'll take the next one. 20 knot head when she slows down quick. I like it. That was that was the one. I don't know what the numbers were on that one, but it felt good. I need to get G's. Team Vodka, I'm going to get G's, man. I saw Team Vodka using G's in the Discord last night. I'm going to, because uh, I think I'm going to can fly live here all together, because it's, it's starting to get more and more inconsistent, and the developers stopped supporting it. So I think I will pick up the plugin called G's. Some of you might be familiar with it. We're going to stop that recording, come back to this screen here, and we're going to go full-blown turnaround mode, real-world turnaround mode. Packs are clapping furiously. I didn't have the volume up for that one. All right, welcome to wherever we are. Hot shot, I will, man. I'll check her out. What do we got here? Is this an Airways 190? I don't believe we have a scenery for this airport. Ooh. 190 or 170? Let's park between both of them. Altitude should disappear. Uh, it disappeared now. How many hours do you need for your commercial? Uh, your straight up commercial rating is 250 hours. Your ATP is what, 1500 or you can do a restricted to 1200? bounce brake set full screen cam we never started the APU we got a jet bridge driver Let's start the APU 
which I could not do today because we were APU-less. While that's starting, we'll kill two. We'll kill the seatbelt sign. No smoking, sterile. We'll wait for the APU to spool up here. No, this livery is not fictional. This is a real-world livery operated by Shuttle America. I believe there was three jets, if I'm not mistaken. Someone can probably Google it. I'm pretty sure it was just three jets uh, that Shuttle America operated from Okalele, and then there was like some Mesa partnership. I don't know. I'll have to actually Google it because now I'm curious, but I remember when this was going down. All right, APU is up and running. Let's go ahead and kill one. Request deboarding, please. Hawaiian. Also turn off 3A. There you go. That's coming off. And those stay on auto. APU is up and running. Beacon light can come off. Seatbelts are off. I never turn off. We blinded everybody with the uh, taxi light too. Cool. Oh, this guy's a real pilot. Doesn't even turn his taxi light off and he goes into the taxi line. All right, well, was that a firestorm of information for you or what? I'm going to save that replay. PHTO landing. Saved. I'm ready to go for the next one. Uh, we need to open the main exit. Cap, the door's stuck. It's not opening. Hold on, let me go look at it. Shh! Ah. Oh. Alright. Alright, deboarding has commenced. We need to go ahead and connect the GPU because that APU is loud. <laughs> GPU, avail, and off she goes. That was very enjoyable background noise while I was grinding the sounds. Ooh, nice, hot chat. Very good, very good. Ever playing MSP? All the time, man. Uh, I'm not sure A-Rot on uh, Microsoft. I know on X-Plane it definitely is. Oh, we did shut it off, right? Is it got to do a cooldown? How long is the cooldown? I'm going to deafen y'all until we hear it uh, deplane. While we listen, I'm going to quickly do a refile here. PHTO to PHNL. Same flight number with an alternate. All looks good. Hour 15, departure 8. We're going to arrive on the reef runway 8 right. Ito V-22, she lay one. And that's for the new time. Generate flight. Who's running in to get the coffee? Kako, you are, my man. <laughs> You're getting the coffee. Two cafe con leches, please. One for you, one for me. Here's my card. All right, new flight plan has been filed. I'm gonna pre-file you on Iveo real quick here. We're gonna go real time. If you wonder where the replay is, I save the replay. We'll watch both replays at the conclusion of the stream. I'm gonna refile us and hit the lav here myself. And actually, I wanna say hi to my, uh, my oldest. I didn't get to see her when I came home. She was napping. So I still wanna Say hello, give me a few minutes. We're in on the deplaning process. Now, if I go back, now here's a question. Are we gonna have to like, clear the flight plan out here? I wonder if there's a way to like clear it out or we just re-downloaded it. This will be good. Okay, so the way to work around a lack of turnaround, you need to go to root, delete the origin airport. Okay, delete the origin. Aha! Look at that. So we've learned something here in chat. That's good to know. We're turnaround state. We've deleted the origin. 
Let's go ahead and do a quick reload, PHTO. Uh, that's what I like to do before I get coffee, get the box semi-loaded. We're doing PHTO to PHNL, same flight number. Send the request. There she is. Apply and activate, ladies and gentlemen. We're in turnaround state. I'm going to let this do its thing here until we're completely deboarded. So we're still deplaning. We have our flight plan received. We're going to leave it there in that uh, mode. We're going to put the transponder to standby. Uh, we're going to squawk 3662. Nah, just kidding. 2000. Any brickyard again is probably you know what I'm talking about. FMS will reset. We'll get rid of the preview needle. We don't need you. And we can put him back in FMS1 or her. We'll put this on the flight control page. And we'll put this in plan mode for verification of the flight plan when we build it. And who's ready to grab some cafe con leches? Looks like we got some rain moving in. Is this not fun? I love this. Like, regional hops are so dang fun. I absolutely love it. 3662, Kako. You know what I'm talking about. Never forget the 3662 Club. Never forget. All right. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to do something here. Oh, yeah. Reset Fly Live. So we're going to swap these around. That should update for y'all. I think it just did. Beautiful. All right. Was Robert? Who's see. Was Robert here providing ATC? I'm just catching up with the chat there. Sorry. <clears throat> one minute cool down, one minute spool down. There you go. That's right. That sounds familiar. All right. I'm going to look at these sounds real quick before I go. We have a Boris update in the Discord. If you are, if you want to check out the Discord, the link's in the description. You may not be able to see it. I'm not going to, you won't see it, but you will hear it. Let's see. Where is it at? Boris... Oh, we have a, I'm going to mute the simulator and I'm going to mute the sound of GSX. Let's take a listen to what Boris has working. Close your eyes and picture. Dude. Oh, we've had a camera change. Now we're on top of the wing. Oh, Boris. Sounding good, dude. This is first heard here. If you're not a member, you can hear it here live. If you want to watch a video, it's in the V1 After Dark section. Cool stuff, Boris, man. That sounds very... It sounds like I should have it by the end of the night. By the end of a business day tomorrow, I should have something to test. So, appreciate you, Boris. That sounds fan-freaking-tastic. No, we don't want a deboard crew. Deboarding's completed. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clear that out. We're going to add flight. Import Simbri flight plan. Hilo to Honolulu. Boom. Boom. We're ready to... We're ready to go. I will uh, request boarding or reload sim brief. Perfect. That's our updated stuff. Request boarding. And we're going to depart runway 8. Wet runway numbers. We're going to do flaps 2 because the wind especially. And we'll sync that. We'll calculate. Ah, did I click it? Calculated it. We're only running one number and we'll do real time. Time remaining six minutes and 40 seconds. Boarding is going to start. Loading is going to start. I'm going to hit the lav. Time for the lav break. I'll throw up some tunes for you in the turn here. I should be back in less than five minutes, hopefully. Yeah, A Rot. FSS pack is in the works from Boar Sound Studios, allegedly.
I feel like we need, no, we need like uh, Hawaiian music. What is it? tropical? We need tropical theme. Tropical. Tropical house music. All right, chat. We'll have break, cafe con leche break. I shall be right back. Enjoy the baggage loading screen. <laughs> Man, us simmers, we're, we're nerds. I love it though. I'll be back. All right. How are we doing? Everyone working hard? Look at that 190. Whoo! Where'd that other 175 go? U.S. Airways Express 101 Hotel Quebec. Another brickyard again over there. Gotta love it. Look at that Aloha Air Cargo 73200. I feel like someone's just phantom following the stream and loading up juice retro jets, and I love it. All right, what can we do to uh, expedite our off-the-gate time here? We did our flight plan. We've received it. We downloaded it, right? I think we did, didn't we? Yes, we did. Uh, we need to do our departure, though. So we're going to depart runway 8. This song's got some funk to it, but uh, it's a little more chill.
not really tropical though. It's pretty weak tropical. This song sounds kind of like a vibe. Uh, no departure procedure. We're going to be runway heading off runway eight. Apply. Uh, so that's our departure. Next page. Remember, we get to our arrival airport. Select arrival. We're going to land on the reef eight right. RNAV eight right. We'll try an RNAV approach. We'll see what it is. Uh, Alana, Bespo, Abuki, or Gecko. Let's see if we can load it up right the first time. So let's go charts. Oops. Wrong X. Add. Oh, I don't know why I keep doing that. P H N L. Honolulu. We're going to try an RNAV approach. We'll, I don't think I've ever tried one. Uh, RNAV 8 right. RNAV GPS 8 right. And we're going to take it off Alana. Alana is set. And we're on the Schley 1 with the transition. I guess I need to disconnect and reconnect for my flight plan on Iveo, right? Let me reconnect. There's our flight plan. Beautiful. Uh, off the LNY. Is that Lanai? Have fun with eight. I'm going to do four right from Alana. I'm going to land on the reef. we got to land on the reef, dude. Come on, Vodka. Land on the reef with me. Landed on the reef. Lanai, Shale, Alana, RNAV8 right. Apply. Look at our page numbers. We now have five, two, three, four, five. We're done. Perf and knit. 300 and zero. Let's go ahead and go to our manifest. Here's our numbers for eight. We're doing wet numbers, flaps two, 30, 35, 43. Send to McDo. And the CACO is gonna get working on it right now for us. So we're gonna let him plug in the numbers and then we're gonna change them. Boarding completed. Fire up the APU. Seatbelt sign, no smoking. Sterile light. We're closing up the exits. If you don't land on the reef runway, Hawaii bans you from ever returning. That, that's all I need to know. Reef it is. Team Vodka, land on the reef. You need taxi practice, Team Vodka. I've I seen you taxi, man. You need some taxi practice. All right, our, our sloppy first officer has finished the uh, perf data. Let's go ahead and correct his mistakes or her mistakes. 300 and zero, the taxi takeoff fuel. Next page, cruise altitude. Uh, we're going to go back. It's even altitude, right? West is even. So let's go ahead and go 220 cruise altitude. 220 is set. I don't know where the winds are. A-Rot's going to yell at me, but we're going to be fine. We have enough gas. Let's go to the next page not modeled for climb speed. This is where you could select your climb speeds or your cost index speed. Obviously not modeled yet. Early access. We know where it is. We don't need to mess with it. Go here. Take off data set. T01. Uh, flex off. Enter. FMS takeoff. Confirm. Flaps 2. Takeoff CG. 23 on the temp. No flex. T01. Addicts on. Takeoff select. We're at the speeds page. We are done. Flaps 2. Takeoff pitch 10 degrees. VFS is 191 knots. Go back to my manifest, verify trim for departure, 3.7. 3.7, we're about ready for pushback. That's coming on. Beacon is coming on. Prepare for push and departure. Let's go to Honolulu, chat. Definitely not tropical mission or music, but <clears throat> I may or may not have allegedly had to pour myself a little, uh, little Bourbonia. My throat was sore, so I had to get a little bourbon here. Which side? Those that maybe you're watching this video on replay, like, well, I wonder, are, so are they worth it? Is the E-Jet worth it? Let's just take a moment out of reality here for me. Got up at 5 o'clock this morning. Departure flew real world, A321, about five hours to fly in. Down back, drove home, got on stream doing sim flying in an e-jet at 6 6 51 p.m we're on our second leg and i don't want this stream to end like i i want to just like hop in a 190 and do east coast ops like that's the kind of fun i'm having with this jet right now just straight up honest with you i'm having fun with this jet we encountered we definitely encountered some bugs on the arrival we had our fms act up 
But what did we do? Confirm, activate, or confirm. What did you say, Kako? Confirm, monitor, something, something. Say it again, Cami. Confirm, activate, monitor, intervene. Confirm, activate, monitor, intervene. Put something in the box, activate it. Did it monitor it? It's not doing what you want, intervene. Had that issue with the FMS, it's a bug. We worked around it. Flight path vector got frozen. We're aware of the bug. Look at your other indicators on your PFD. Look at your pitch attitude, look at your vertical speed. Not an issue. Came down, landed, greased it on, and now we're turning. We need to go nose right, tail left. Cockpit the ground, brakes are released, clear to push. Commencing push. All engines clear. We never just connected GPU, will. okay, yeah we did. Start at will, we're gonna start them up on the pushback. Here we go. We'll go back to the map page. We need to reset our altitude and magic barrel ref. Altitude, we're scrolling you all the way up to uh, 220. Normal we'll call here. Hit the little up arrow for hundreds of feet. Zoom it all the way in so you can see better because my, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> there we go, up arrow. 220 is our cruise altitude. Uh, bug our speeds up, IAS. Let's run those puppies up to 210 K knots. And now we're not doing any teaching. We're not doing any pro piloting. We're just dealing for straight juice on this flight. Music's coming to an end. We're starting engine one. Oh, well, now we get a tropical song. All right, there we go. Let's turn it up. Let's juice it up. Let's go back. <clears throat> Cactus Ops. Not enough time to get late on this turn. You get late every time you get off the airplane in Honolulu or in Hilo. Where, where are we? I don't know. Somewhere. You have to be good in here. I use the crash apps. Brakes are set. Clutter disconnect. Nothing's wrong with Europe, Zippy. We're going to do some Europe ops. I tell you what, though, Zippy, don't get mad at me. I want to do some uh, Azul ops. Who doesn't want to see this Jet 195? Uh, what's that place in uh, Brazil with the with the approach on the SBRJ Team Vodka? You know what I'm talking about. We were just there last night. Yeah, who wants to see some Azul E195 ops? We'll do a little mix up. We've got a good start on one, turn and two. Let's go. What's wrong with Europe? It's full of Europeans. Oh my goodness. Shots fired. Santos Dumont, Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> CH says, I remember flying on the 170 with Republic. My mom was freaking out at TOD because the engines failed. CH, I, that's not the first time I've heard that. Uh, you know you can get them good too, is if you have a super, uh, uh, or let's say you do a toga takeoff on a, on a IAE engine powered Airbus, and then at reduction, you just go straight back. You go from toga to climb on an IAE engine, it, it dang near sounds like engines flamed out. Like it'll, it'll get you. That's why you always remember, there's a thrust range between flex and climb. You don't just have to rip it back to climb. It literally sounds like the engines are flaming out. <laughs> Alright, sounds like we've got two good starts. Yes, we do. We're doing flaps two. I think that's the proper position. Here they come. Bringing this in the SBRG will certainly end the it doesn't fly well argument. Gray shirt. I agree. We're going to do an SBRJ stream and we're going to do a FNO stream. Look, I feel like this is deja vu. We just pushed back and now it's raining again. Can I get some Microsoft Flight Sim Kool-Aids in chat? Can we get some Kool-Aids for dynamic environments? This is this is what real life is like. Love this sim. All right, two good starts. Flaps 2, 3.2 on the trim. We've got to verify that. That's coming off. That's coming to auto. Uh, everything else looks good there. Let's verify our trim setting. What do we have? We had 3.7. So we're actually going to run it up to 3.7. 3.7 on the trim, 191, 210. I tell you what, we're going to hit the uh, toga button there. Okay, this is something that can happen. Look at my PFD. We have roll TOL now, but we don't have our takeoff command bars. We need to select our flight director on. With the flight director on, now we have our takeoff command bars, roll, LNAV, TO. I'm not going to arm the autothrust till we're lined up on the runway. 
Let's go ahead and get out of here. Hilo traffic, break our, our correction. Mercury 357 taxi runway 8. We're in Hilo, right? Those lights coming on. Brakes are releasing. 257 watching, 259 on the likes. I like it, Zippy. If you enjoy the stream, if you got any value out of the stream, do hit that like button. It helps. It's not it's not just for me. It's 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 for you as well because the more people that like videos, that's that's an indicator of the kind of content I can continue to produce. So, and I selfishly want you to hit the like button on this video because I want to keep flying this jet on stream. Change Freak, thank you, appreciate you. Let's go ahead and go radio page 228. My problem, I need both. 175 and the 190 for JetBlue. Gray shirt. I'll tell you this, my man. If you buy both, you're buying two separate jets. Same type rating. They handle different, they sound different, and it's two separate jets. Now, I completely transparent honesty. I wish there was some sort of uh, like bundle pack, you know, especially since it's early access, or maybe because it's early access, they're not doing a bundle pack, you know, where you can bundle, get both sets of them for, you know, show a little love to the consumer, but, you know, I'm, you know, it's, I'm not in development or marketing, so I'm just a pilot, so I don't know much. But maybe when they're fully released, maybe on a full access version, they'll have some like sales where you can combo them up. Because it does make it hard. It does make it hard to select one or the other. Which, maybe that's... Let's see. Maybe we figured it out. That's why they have full price for both jets, because they're separate jets. Even though they're not, but they're separate jets. All right, we got a 175 blasting off. Here goes Team Vodka. Victor, there's not. I wish there was, man. I wish there was a Brazil, Brasilia. Pilot Tris, hell yeah, man. I love the U-190s. All right, there he goes. Let's not taxi out on the runway. Nice and smooth rotation, man. That looked good, Team Vodka. Team Vodka's finally getting a handle on it. He's got to bring the gear up, though. Got to bring the gear up, and you'll be all right. Kelmo, welcome to Private Pilot. Glad to have you on board, man. All right, we never did our flight control check. Let's go ahead and do that here. Important. I'm looking over at the first officer's MFD. Flight controls are checked. Trim, 3.6, we say. 3.6 is set. Flaps 2. Rolls and yaws are centered. TO1. I never did this before, but let's do RTO and then TO config check. Take off, okay. Take off. No take, no take off. Spoiler. Or was it? No take off. Break. No take off. Break. No take off. Flap. <laughs> I mean, PMDG charges $60 plus for several variants of the 737. Big Mac, you have a fantastic point. You know, why is everybody... No one says anything about PMDG charging $60 for literally the same exact airplane minus a model and flight model change. The 700 and 800 are literally exactly the same minus the model and the flight model, which Embraer 170, 75. Same plane, same type. I don't, do you, I don't even think you need differences training, though, from a 737 to a 738. Or maybe you do because the 8's an NG. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not typed on the 73. But you have a very, very good point, Big Mac. So, see, this is why I'm not in marketing. I wouldn't make very much money. <laughs> Ever played takeoff, no takeoff? <laughs> yes. I bought the Dash 700 model, wanted to charge me the same price for the 800. Not a damn chance, AFO. I hear you, man. I hear you. 700 is an NG2, okay. You probably need to do a CBT, maybe a single CBT. You might. Yeah, that's right. I guess they're all NGs, right? Maybe some differences for the max. PMDG is like a Yeti cooler. You pay for the name. Fair point. PMDG has made a name from their, for themselves. You can't argue that. 
Six to nine are all NGs. Thank you. That, that makes sense. That's why Phoenix is making a classic. It's coming out. I'm telling you, I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones, Chad. 737-400, U.S. Airways Ops in a Phoenix 734. If we, if we wish for it enough, power through manifestation, just like Dr. Aaron Rodgers. PMD products are fairly refined. They are very refined, pushing Porsche. And that's kind of what I was getting at. You know, maybe I, because it's early access, people are like, why are you charging me for an airplane when you haven't completed the other airplane? I get it. We're crossing a runway here. Uh, yellow traffic. Uh, Mercury 357, we're crossing 321, taxi and 8. We need the Dukes, 49 Whiskey, I know. Unfortunately, with the delay in the Dukes, and with my current situation of possibly moving soon, I am not fully confident we'll be able to have our Duke parties together for a while. These are still early access King Bob Kingdom. Anything show-stopping with them? There is nothing show-stopping in my opinion. The largest uh, feature that is not implemented yet is VNAV. Oh no. Okay, Whew, freeze there. Um, we talked about it uh, in pretty good length earlier on the stream, but these jets are more than capable of flying on networks, they're more than capable of flying in uh, busy airspace, they're more than capable of flying uh, restricted arrivals and SIDS. However, you do have to monitor and intervene all of your inputs, just like any good pilot would. No traffic. Um, Mercury 357, we're going to line up on runway 08 for a northbound departure. Nobody in the area already. I was looking at the web eye, so that's why I didn't check left or check right. But yeah, they're still early access, but they're a lot of fun. PMDG gained itself a lot of kudos over the years, but it should be careful about alienating the community. Just look at Captain Sim. You're right, Dale. I, I think that's a pretty stark contrast, though. I mean, you can't really throw PMDG and Captain Sim in the same bucket. A PMDG is, well, I want to say they were the GOAT for a reason. In my personal opinion, I think Phoenix is now the official GOAT. They are the pinnacle of flight sim add-ons. But PMDG is not far behind, but I think Phoenix is, is the true king. All right. Cams are on. Let's do uh, outside. So we're lined up. Let's hit our AT button. TO armed. Roll LNAV. TO. Elo traffic. Mercury 357 departing runway 08. Let's do it from wing view. Spool them up. Yoga. All right, TO, auto throttle, auto thrust, throttle hold. 80 knots. V1, V1, rotate. Oh my gosh, it rotates so good. Positive rate, gear up, fly with. Go watch my, uh, oh, I never synced my heading bug. Go watch the stream we did when we recreated my first real world flight and tell me that rotation did not look starkly similar to the one in that video at the beginning of the stream where I made that cinematic and I was rotating off Philly. I mean, I know it's a little bit different for me because I'm feeling the force feedback, but dang, it felt so good. Oh, she just kind of lags there. You bring that nose up, and you can almost, you always hear that. Like, you hear the wheel come off, and then you hear that click of the uh, up lock releasing in the gear lever so you can bring the gear up. So dang good. All right, green dot will go up a flap here. Why does it say speed brake? Speed brake is down, right? All right, we're going to juice her up. We're going to go TRS, climb one. 
help us accelerate here. This is the FSS1 Chandler, that is correct. Buttered the takeoff. All right, I'm gonna run my speed bug up to 250, but remember, we gotta be careful because what mode are we in? Oh, it won't even let you. You see that? Won't even let you go above the red line, good. All right, flaps, zero. A little bit more nose down trim. Let's get her centered on the course line here. We're l navin out of here. Should have a juicy uh, breakout. All right, our flaps are up. I'm gonna continue to bug up 250 knots. can't see where I'm going, the autopilot's not. I got a hand fly it. I wanted to do the GoPro breakout view there. Where's my free drink? Key six. Sorry, man, we left it in the terminal. I'll give you a voucher. Catch the next flight on the Beach 8 1900. You were late. We had to leave you, man. Free voucher next time on Mokalele. got to be close to break out. Here it comes. Come on, let's break out before we roll it. Come on, give me cinematic breakout. We're so close. Oh my juice. Diego Arnafoldo. Uh, yes, uh, if you want to know my full answer, well, I recommend at the very beginning of the stream, we talked about it at uh, length when we were looking at the right uh, wing. Um, my short answer, and I, I know you're just tuning in and asking the question, I'm, I'm not trying to ignore your question, but my answer is yes, I recommend this jet if you are aware of what you're getting into with early access, such as not having a VNAV. There are ways to manipulate this aircraft just fine with its vertical modes and no VNAV, but you have to understand how this jet operates, and we spent the entirety of the first leg kind of going over how to properly maneuver this jet without a VNAV and using different modes such as flight level change and flight path angle. We didn't even touch vertical speed mode, but honestly, unless you were a 145 driver and before flying the 170, no one really used vertical speed mode. We, we mostly just used FPA. You always knew who was on the Chautauqua certificate because they'd come in there and try to use vertical speed. Um, but yes, I recommend it. If you, if you are okay with not having a VNAV aircraft and you are actively aware of knowing the bugs that can occur, the jet is perfectly flyable. You just have to be willing to monitor and intervene when certain bugs pop up. The most common of which are uh, little FMS2 bugs. Every now and then you get a little, like the FMS wants to go to somewhere else that it didn't kind of like gets in the way. It's correctable. You just got to redirect it or clear out the fix in the box, redirect where you want to go. And then the flight path vector sometimes gets hung up when you're on a like switching into an approach mode. Um, so you got to use your other modes of to see what the airplane's doing, such as vertical speed and your altimeter and your main pitch. Um, because that flight path vector getting stuck is actually kind of scary because if you're trained to follow the flight path vector and if the flight path vector is giving you incorrect information, uh, you could easily drive it in the ground if you're IMC. So you gotta mon you've got to truly monitor all your indicators. How does the fly-by-wire differ in the E-Jet versus Airbus? Big Mac, so in the E-Jet, only the elevator and rudder are fly-by-wire. The aileron is conventional However, it's hydraulic, so you have conventional pulleys and cables that run just in front of the aileron, and then it's connected to a uh, PAs, uh, basically a hydraulic actuator, which then moves the ailerons. Now, I was also digging in the manual, the Embraer jet, the, uh, we called them artificial feel units, I think that's one of the terms, um, they are scaled to match resistance to the actual yoke, uh, to the, the airspeed of the aircraft. Even though it's synthetic, 
it's still trying to uh, give you that type of feedback. That's why it's called an artificial feel unit. Um, so you do feel like you're flying conventional almost all the way through. It'll feel heavy, it'll feel out of trim, you gotta keep her in trim. Whereas the Airbus, the side stick feels the same all the time, every time, right? It's just, it's roll rate and G-load. Uh, whereas this is a little bit different. You prefer the E-Jets or the ATR? Ooh, Victor Silva. Victor Silva, why are you gonna put me on the spot, bro? E-Jet or ATR? I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. <laughs> I like them both, dude. They're both so different. I got to tell you, flying the ATR with that sound pack and having the proper detents on the on the uh, Throttle Tech Airbus throttle makes flying that ATR a ton of fun, man. I'm being completely honest with you. Turbo props are just more visceral, you know. The whole experience is more visceral in a turbo prop, but the E Jet is pretty hands on and as well so man it's tough dude i can't I, I can't answer that all right let's see if we can level off here and cruise without actually uh overshooting let's see how our bruner does here yeah gray shirt there is an atr sound pack f i believe it's ft sim now when boris drops a sound pack for the 170 ask me again we need a sob model caco yes dude we need a Saab. Hey, do you remember? You're a Boston guy, right? You remember seeing all the Pen Air Saabs in Boston? Whatever happened to Pen Air? I remember we used to park next to them. Everyone like Captain, like, well, I flew that back in 1975. All right. All right. Thousand to level off. What's the name? Uh, Manny Rivera. This is the uh, Bruner. Uh, force feedback yoke. Now there's two Bruners. There's one with like a little uh, digital screen here. So it's, it's I think twice the price. Uh, this is the the other one. Uh, someone I think Zippy probably has a has it done. You can Google it maybe Zippy if you got a link to it. Uh, but it is the Bruner force feedback uh, yoke, and it's it is quite uh, seriously the most game changing piece of hardware I ever invested in for my sim experience we invest in a lot of hardware i know it's expensive it's a you know with shipping and everything you're looking at fifteen hundred dollars um and i'm not sponsored by bruner i wish i was to be completely honest i wish i was but i'm not i'm not sponsored by bruner i bought this yoke uh, with my own hard-earned money just like uh, a lot of y'all and i have to say though like it's it is single-handedly one of the most or one of the best investments i ever made for flight simulation if I could, you know, if you want a budget for something, maybe you're looking at a, a, a GPU upgrade or something, but maybe you, you know, don't need a GPU. Maybe your GPU is doing just fine. There's something about force feedback that just changes the ball game. Oh, uh, there we go. Thanks, Zippy. He's got the, he's got the link. Yeah, I got Yoke Cam up right now. For you, the best add-on on Microsoft, it's a 146. It's one of the best. I really enjoy the I really enjoy the 146 Diego. There's so many good ones now that I have to do a top five list. All right, we're full screen. Yoke cam's coming off. We're gonna turn the sim down. We're level 220. Autopilot's on. Hey, Team Vodka, I'm really happy about this, man. We really got that AP worked out. Team Vodka nailed it with the autopilot, uh, I guess, regime that it talks to the yoke with the software and the Bruner so that is just so nice to have that worked out like it should we were having autopilot issues in previous streams but that was not an airplane issue that was a Bruner uh, a Bruner issue I just ordered pizza via Yelp it cost 50 bucks jeez Catco well that's because you ordered it via Yelp man it's like all right your total is uh, 20 23 dollars and 77 cents and then you're like, okay, check out, you sign it, and then it's like, okay, your order has been placed. Grand total, $51.25. <laughs> I feel like that happens all the time with uh, Uber Eats. Yes, hey, AFO's got a good point, Caco. Just be glad it didn't cost you 36.62. 
Boo says, you and Vodka convinced me to order a Bruner should be here this week sometime. Uh, Boo, Bo Bruning, I keep screwing your name up, dude. I am so excited for you, man. Um, the CLS software is kind of a lot to digest, uh, but if you have, I've, I've been uploading profiles, Vodka and I have been uploading profiles, Vodka is a really good profile maker, to the Bruner Cloud, you should be able to just download those profiles. Um, when you have, you know, some toilet time, try to read through the CLS to SIM software uh, guide to kind of understand. There's so much you can do with the software. It's very powerful stuff. Uh, I mean, you, as so much as adjusting the amount of force you feel went through the yoke taxing over bumpy surfaces. Like, it's you can program so much. Uh, it's definitely overwhelming at first. And you might... I felt the same way. As soon as I opened it up, I was like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? Is this even worth it? That feeling is going to be normal. But once you get the right profile and you do your first flight, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, how did I ever fly without uh, force feedback? So it's, uh, I'm excited for you, man. I know it's a pretty penny, but I can, I can guarantee you, you won't regret it. Like that's how confident I am. As much as it is, I can guarantee you, you won't regret it. I think Team Vodka would say the same thing. The front door guy is charging me a fee too. Ay, ay, ay. V1 and Vodka are also handing out Kool-Aid. I'm handing out, I'm hanging out the, uh, the bourbon right now. No more dead fish. 1500 isn't that crazy when comparing to good sim racing gear it depends what you want to get out of it hey buckeye fly that is a great way to put it you know um and that's i feel like as a content creator that is that's part of my role is to really make sure i not just promote but anything that i suggest is in fact worth what you're putting into it because i feel like in the flight sim community it's not always you get what you pay for. Um, you know, you look at stuff on the marketplace, you look at uh, other other devs and other, you know, it's not as simple as you get what you pay for in the flight sim community. There is some weeding out that needs to be done. And I, I feel like that's part of my role as a content creator in this community. Uh, and I can tell you right now though, the Bruner is, you will get every penny out of that that you spend, promise you. I gotta get pedals, throttle, then a Bruner. Uh, I would go pedals, Bruner, then throttle, Zippy. <laughs> fly with the fly with keyboard thrust, uh, and then and then get to throttle. No, I don't know. Yeah, that's probably the right way to go. Pedals, throttle, then a Bruner. Oh no! Now we got the OHIOs going through the chat. <laughs> David said you talked me into it. I have so much hardware to eBay. Uh, and convert into a new yoke purchase here. David G, I'm excited for you, man. I'm excited for you. And again, like this is, I wanna make sure y'all know, like, oh, he's just sponsored by Bruner. I'm not, I'm really not. I tried, I tried reaching out multiple times. I never heard anything back, so. I got it, put it through its paces, did some flights with it, got it dialed in and then we showcased it and I've been, haven't looked back since. Would love to go your route and get the base with the 320 stick. That's a, yeah. Zippy Zapple. You gotta, it's it's what you prefer, man. Because if you already have a stick, I mean, your, your velocity side stick is not a, a, a slouch, you know, by any means, right? It gets the job done. You can enjoy simming with that side stick. Um, for you, I really do think pedals are, are kind of the most important thing. You really need pedals to enjoy uh, flying these jets around. Because I, I tried flying without pedals when I was splitting the uh, the office and the house sim. It's, you gotta, pedals would be game changer for you, man. Funny looking caravan. Flame says, you can buy an FSC 320 side stick replica for the low price of 4500 <laughs> With damping and everything. Look, Flame, hey man. I'm not gonna knock it. I mean, there are guys that are building cockpits and that's what they need. Look, if I had a spare $4,500 lying around that I didn't care about, I would check it out. But, you know, that's just not in my... I think the... Uh, I'd rather buy two Bruners, one as a backup, just in case. 
than go that route. You know, with my base and stick, I would rather have another Bruner sitting next to me than get the FSC. Do you want... Oh, I already read that one. Uh, you should fly PMDG with the Bruner. Ryan, yeah, what's going to happen soon, man? I remember. Neil says, I remember when the ERJ-1 first came out, people felt uh, conned. So, I don't know the complete life or the complete uh, what's the word I'm looking for lifespan of this particular jet like I don't know how long it's been in early access I don't know how long it's been out I don't know when the last update has been out so I can I don't really I can understand when you're like oh man when it came out it was not good I, I believe you um, I didn't fly it then and I don't know when the last update was but and in its current state right now it's very flyable. It's very enjoyable. Just learn. I love what Cam, what uh, Kako said. Cami. I mean, that should be. I should pin that. Confirm, activate, monitor, and intervene. That is literally by the FSS E170. Cami, like, should just be included in the title, and then you're good to go. Because you saw it here. We had bugs pop up. We crushed them, and we did a nice landing into uh, wherever that was. So. And we'll fly it again. We're going to fly into a busy event, too. I'll, we'll, we're going to really try to load it up. Maybe a 190. Uh, maybe U.S. Airways 190. Mikey B. with the $2 Super Chat. Appreciate you, man. 4,518 years could put the kids through college. That's true. Full motion sim party at the V1 compound next summer. Oh, I'd love it, Key 6. I would, man. I'm ready to spend 15 mil on a level D. Be so, dude, a level D sim would be, they're not as fun. Like, it's not as fun as a flight sim because the graphics are better in flight sim. Like, everything is so much better. I don't want to say so much better. It's just, and they're at the end of the day, they're both sims. The level D is a sim. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a sim. So, Left you the camera view Intel in the Discord. JJ Stevens, appreciate you, man. I'm going to check it out because that would be helpful to bind uh, the outside view or like kind of my hack view version without having to do CFG edits. US Air Boston Friday night. That'll tax it. Gray shirt. Let me check my schedule here. Let me see. What am I doing Friday? I think I have a turn on Friday, but I think I'm going to drop it. Um, Let's see. Oh, Saturday I fly, though. I fly at 1047. So if I drop Friday, though, we could do a Friday nighter. I kind of wanted to do a long haul this week. Does anyone feel like doing a long haul this week? Because I want to just set up a long haul and go to bed. <laughs> Maybe like a 748. Does an FNO mean you'll be back on that sim? No comment. Is the 190 further along than the 170? Thinking about picking up the 190. Ryan, the only real difference, Ryan, is as far as systems go, you have a HUD and steep approach mode. Now, there are things different about the two. The jet flies differently. The 190 flies differently. The model's different. It looks, I love the way the model looks. I love the wing view on the uh, 190. I just like the 190 wing better than the 170 wing uh, in real life and in sim. Uh, it's a it's it's really good. I can only my only recommendation when you're trying to decide which one to buy is pick which one is going to have the airline liveries that you want to fly. You know, if the airline you really want to fly flies 190s, get the 190 package. If the airline you really want to fly flies 170s, get the 170 package. You're not going to have a difference. You, like the, you're not going to one doesn't have a leg up over the other as far as uh, functionality goes. So get which one you think you're going to fly the most. You should revisit the 339. Dom, what's up, man? Good to see you, Dom. Hope you are well. Glad to see you live, Dom. Always a pleasure. Uh, 339. Man, what's going on with the 339? We could. I haven't done a 339 flight in a long time, Dom. Has there been updates to it? What about a long haul in the 310? Not seeing that bird come out for a while. Yeah, we could, Dale. I don't know. I like the. I mean, we could we get the A three hundred Pratt and Whitney out too, though. Possible. I just four engines are better than two. You know, two engines are mid, but the only four engine jet we have is a seven four. So I could understand why 
want to see something else. Uh, K6 with a $5 super chat, man. You make it sound like it's so out of reach. Just charge 300000 per hour for instruction. Oh, my word. Uh, with those prices, Key 6 I'd be able to retire real quick. Appreciate the $5 super chat, man. Will you long haul PMDG 777 when it releases? Yes. Which one does American fly? 49 Whiskey. They used to fly, well, what do you mean American? So U.S. Airways used to fly the 190, 195 on the, U, on the East Coast shuttle, U.S. Airways, uh, which was then bought by, well, obviously they merged with American. Actually, they bought American. Um, I think they threw the livery on it, right? It was an American actually painted 190 before they got rid of them, or were they always U.S. Airways paint before they retired them? I can't remember. But American Eagle, operated by Republic, uh, PSA, Mesa, they flew the Embraer 170, 175. So regional American flew the 170, 175. Mainline U.S. Airways flew the Embraer 190s. I can't remember off the top of my head if they ever painted the 190s in that new American paint before they got rid of them. I think there were, though. I think they did. It wasn't for a very long time, though. All right, we need to get down. Uh, we're not doing a lesson on this stream. If you want a, if you want a lesson in uh, managing this aircraft, I strongly suggest you watch the first leg. Uh, we talked at length about managing the airplane in vertical modes. Right now, I'm just going to go easy mode, 10,270 knots on the speed, and we're going to go flight level change so I can sit back, relax, and enjoy the descent. Santiago, good stuff, man. Good to see you. Uh, Joe, uh, Mr. Jonathan Beaumont says they did. Okay, good. Uh, I thought so. I mean, if you really want to edge, you could just wait for another long haul for that 380. <sighs> yeah, but I think we might be waiting a while. Eagle guys peed in our flight cases down in Miami when we're happy. Yeah, oh, yeah, Catco, I remember, dude. Dude, they, they were pissed. I Did I ever tell you? I, um, I was denied a jump seat in Chicago because of the just because the Chicago flying when American did the American flying out of Chicago I literally was kicked off an envoy jump seat because he's like who are you with get off my airplane literally what he said to me verbatim I'm like uh okay <laughs> yeah there was some serious animosity man yeah and I heard the Miami wasn't much better V1, what airline had the call sign Eagle Flight? That was American Eagle before they uh, branded to Envoy. They flew Embraer 140. They flew a ton of stuff, man, from ATRs, 140, 145, 135 maybe? But definitely 140, 145, Embraer 170, and 175. So Eagle Flight was American Eagle prior to Envoy. U.S. Air Airways Express gray shirt, so uh, Republic Airways, DBA Republic Airways, U.S. Airways Express was the 175s. They did not operate 175s on their mainline certificate, only 190s. Same happened to me in the C bus on a 145. Jeez, dude. I missed the Eagle ATRs in the Caribbean. Oh, yeah, man. Eagle flew the Snob 340. Yeah, yeah, they understand the Snob 340. Yep, Saab. Yep, definitely flew the Saab. Eagle flight. 15.5 for 9 or thou, 9.9. .9. So I now I need to figure out why my Bravo is like adding 100 feet to. Uh, All right, let's take a look at our charts, yeah. So, Alana 3100. Alana, still up there a ways. Let's come back here. Let's go perf data, landing. Landing a nit, runway heading off runway 080, close enough. Temperature is probably like 18. Winds are going to be 070 at 15. 15 knot headwind, 3 knot crosswind, no ice, cat 1. Beautiful, there's our speeds, 138, flaps 5. 
BEA Utifil, Progress, Flight Plan, what's next? So there's Alana. All right, so what I'm trying to mental math here is if at Alana, let's just make it easy. Alana's at 3,000, we're at 10,000, or we will be. So that's 7,000 feet to lose. Seven times three is 21 miles. 21 miles from Alana, if we start down at three degrees, we should cross it right at 3,000. Let's put it to the test. So we will also slow to 250 knots once we level here at 10,000. I think I'm going to do Porter E195, Vancouver to Montreal. Ooh, I like it. Real world calls. I'll catch the rest on replay. Have a great night, V1 and everyone. Fubar, thank you for hanging out with us tonight, man. Thank you for your super chat. Appreciate the support. See ya. Zippy says, maybe we should plan to have you guys do a U.S. long haul and meet in LAX when I go finish the Sydney LA flight. Uh, yeah, Zippy had the CTD. That was sad, man. What a hell of a long haul that was, though. All right, once we reach a cell, or excuse me, once we reach alt, we're going to scroll in 3,000. For mental math, I'm going to go Alana, direct to. Distance to Alana is 44 miles. The reason I'm doing that is because I, I don't want to add segments together. I just want the easy, dirty math. So we're just going direct to Alana so I can get my distance here. We're in alt, with us in alt mode. Let's see how accurate we can be. We're not going to add any buffer. This is going to be for testing purposes. We're going to aim to cross at 3,000. 7 times 3 is 21. At 21 miles, we're going to start down at 3 degrees. We've got an 8-knot, 10-knot tailwind. We'll see what happens. We'll get the fastened seatbelt sign on. We'll get the rest of our lights on for landing. I feel like, should we fast forward it to sunset? It's only like, what, noon here in Hawaii? Let's fast forward it to sunset. Do a sunset Honolulu approach. This is 12:30. Let's make it 5:20, 19. That's close enough. All right, we're juiced up now. Overhead pedestal lights. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, how cool. I was looking at these E-Jets today in Houston. I I really have nothing bad to say about the Embraer. It was such a good bird. I loved it. Well designed, fun to fly, easy to fly. Good birds. I wonder if your Sydney LA stream was the longest flight sim in YouTube history. It's pretty long, man. It's crazy, though, because the landing, you know, we can't even watch it back. I have it recorded, but it was kind of a cool moment with the, everyone that was live. I think we had, like, 800 people watching on the landing, if I'm mista not mistaken. 900, maybe it was more than that. It was There was a lot of people there for the landing. People setting alarms. I know Callie Simmer, she got up early 3 a.m. to watch the landing. I mean, it was, uh, it was a pretty awesome experienced what was it seven let's see seven times three is 21 so 21 miles we're gonna start down you should do a stream recording the world record 172 endurance flight no thank you afo king bob breeze yeah breeze oh, got some good liveries uh, too man. 12 miles for four, uh, right? king bob there's a default breeze livery with the 191 uh with the 190 but there's a uh, there says it's an 8k i mean it's not that much of a performance yet but like the detailing is is really good on the free livery on the flight sim to so if you want to fly breeze i highly suggest you pick up the two liveries on the flight sim to there's one for the 195 and the 190 and it's definitely uh, a little bit more superior to the default breeze livery there's nothing wrong with the default one but it's just it's extra juicy it's got more dirt it's got some grime on it, it just looks really good I had a buddy who had a lav leak on the 170 and it locked up the ailerons. They had to pull the aileron disconnect and get the captain's side back. When they landed, there was a ball of ice in the wheel well. Whoa, cacao, that is wild. That is wild. Uh, 49 whiskey, what'd you say about? Uh, it looks like these are still prohibited for VAAL. I'm gonna have to talk to I'm gonna talk to uh, old Pied Monitor 
He's he's probably gonna be he's probably gonna get he probably won't allow, but I might I might hit him up because I would love to fly this for VAL. I don't see there's nothing that's like super inaccurate about this bird that I why they'd be prohibited. Flight model's good. You just have to be on it. Like don't get violated, Cami. Like he, they should post a bulletin in VAL. I'm gonna hit him up after the stream. He'll probably tell me to pound sand, but I'll say, look, can you, what if you allow these in VAAL, just make a flight notum that says Cami. This is a very early rendition of the 170s that we're receiving to our VAAL fleet. Every time you fly this bird, every action you take, you must Cami, confirm, activate, monitor and intervene. Okay, we're gonna spam three degrees down, FPA. We're starting down one mile early I'm dialing in three degrees. So let's see, we're not going to touch anything. We want to try to cross Alana at 3,000 feet, 9.8, 21 miles out, three degree path. Here we go. Okay, so the flight deck just going to just on descend down to Honolulu. We should be on the ground here just about uh, 15 minutes. We do appreciate your business this afternoon uh, operating on or uh, flying with us on Mokalele Airlines, operated by Shuttle America. On behalf of this Honolulu based flight crew, we want to be the first to welcome you to Honolulu. Thank you. Habada habada. How'd you bind a key to work with knobs? Mr. Caps, remind me when we land. Somebody, it's your job. Zippy, remind me when we land. I want to show you my bindings for the knobs because it's game changing, Mr. Caps. It's game changing. I'm right there with you. One of my biggest pet peeves was not being able to scroll the speed and altitude and heading. You can do it all with the Bravo now, all with hardware. You just have to bind it correctly, and I'll show you exactly what we got. In initial, when no one was looking, I dumped my blue juice. I ain't no sucker. <laughs> uh, vertical direct to. That's right. We know you only had one choice to fly with today, and we thank you for choosing us. <laughs> Mr. Caps, yeah, I, I'll show you, man. Because once I figured it out, oh, man, I just was, it's awesome. Now, here's something to pay attention to. Our ground speed's picked, it's uh, almost doubled since we started our initial descent. Let's take a mental math at halfway here. So at 7,000 feet from 3, that's 4 times 3 is 12. We should be 12 miles at 7,000. Look at that. There's 7,000 feet, 12.3 miles. 12, we're bang on. Even with that tailwind, we're bang on because we are on a flight path angle. I'm a little too fatigued to see if, like, would the wind affect the flight path angle? I don't think it would, right? Because if you're flying a angle, will the ground speed affect it? Oh, gosh, I can't. I'm too, I, too many jet A fumes. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, if you, if you calculate a three-degree path and you descend on that three-degree flight path angle, does the fluctuation in ground speed, is that going to affect if you arrive early or late? I'm having a mental block right now. Someone in chat, help me out. How do you calculate when to start with FPA? What's the formula? Ryan, I'm glad you asked. Very simple. Take the altitude that you're at, subtract the altitude that you want to go to. So in this example, we were at 10,000 feet. We want to cross Alana at 3,000 feet. 10 minus 3 is 7. Multiply it by three because we're going to use a three degree flight path angle. Three times seven is 21 miles. We started down at 21 miles in flight path angle of three degrees. In theory, barring any crazy wind change, we should arrive on time over Alana at 3,000. Kekau says it does, and that would make sense because if you're because your speed over the ground is going to increase, so you would need to have a, a steeper angle, which okay makes sense. I got you. I got you. That's right. But I think even though even though this doubled here, we were 10 knots, now it's 25, I still think it's going to be a negligible difference. We'll keep an eye on it. Right now we're 4.2. At 1,000 feet above, we should be 3 miles out, right? Because that's a 3-degree rule. So at 1,000 feet to lose, 3 miles, let's take a look. We're about to hit 4,000. We're three, we are bang on it right now. Bang on, 4,000, 2.8. So, yeah, you could see the wind. Since our ground speed increased, we needed a tad more FPA, but I mean, we're talking two-tenths of a mile here. So, definitely accurate. 
could you add 10 miles to reduce speed? Absolutely, Diego, and I highly recommend that. Um, if you're gonna be, if you need to slow down on the first leg, Diego, I highly recommend you watch the first leg uh, of this stream. I went over all this in detail, but yes, if you're descending down across a fix and you know you need to slow down, give yourself a 10 mile buffer, give yourself a five mile buffer, give yourself some buffer zone to slow down once you reach that bottom altitude. Absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna confirm, activate, monitor, intervene here. I see some uh, interesting behavior. So it looks like it wants to nav to kit key. I don't want to nav to kit key. I wanted to go to Mern. So it almost skipped it. Now I never verified if Mern was in the box. See what I'm saying here? So you see how it wants to nav to kit kit key. We can just go heading mode here. Let's heading over. If you use FPN, never mind. I was thinking if you let it VNAV, you could change preset. Oh, man, now Kako, now you hurt my brain. My brain. Well, that's kind of why I said no initially, because it's a we're, we're doing a dedicated flight path angle, right? We've calculated the descent on a fixed angle. So it doesn't ground speed, it's not gonna affect our ground speed. In VNAV, absolutely. You know? In VNAV, absolutely, I see it. So in flight path angle, I think we would be fine. I don't know, I'm, this is like the birds in the truck question again. I'm too tired for this. I've been on an airplane since 12 o'clock or five, six o'clock this morning. Look at that view though, daggone. My brain hurts. <laughs> Just. Just make sure you hit the altitude on point. You'll be fine. Just paste in the waypoint. Yeah, I could, that would have been a way. I should have typed in the waypoint and put it on top. So, where it's too late now. It was the Penry. So, we could have just gone P-E-N-R-E. It's going to be too late by the time I dial it in. And I misspelled it. All right, I misspelled it. So I should have just typed in Penry, went direct. So what we're going to do now, we're going to redirect us to, uh, we're going to redirect to kick key. So I'm going to select kick key on the top, direct kick key. Remember, hit nav. L nav and a kick key. Now it probably doesn't help that we're coming in here at 250 knots. Let's go ahead and dial it back. Let's come all the way back to 180. Actually, I'm not going to go all the way out on this. This is like a really long approach to 210. What's after kick key? Oh yeah, Penry, Colis is the final approach fix. So once we get out here a little bit, we might just go direct Colis and activate, see if she does an RNAV. Oh, that is a thing of beauty right there. Sergio Bautista. Uh, Kako, that name sounds very familiar. Mom, that your brain's hurting too. Look at that. I've got a honeycomb alpha arriving sometime today. Zane, awesome, man. Congrats. You ever watch Stig Aviation every now and then? Because y'all watch it, so it pops up in my YouTube feed. My two fall asleep two shows are Stig Aviation and uh, Nomadic. What is it? The Nomadic Pilots? Or the, this, I love falling asleep to that Nomadic channel. Those fairy pilots. These guys are awesome. Hell of a job. The video editing those guys do is awesome. It's got to be because they're sitting up there and cruise for 50 hours a week. All right, let's go to direct Colis here. Like I said, I'm going to straighten it out. We're going to go direct Colis. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to do an approach here. We'll see. I don't know if she will do an RNAV approach. We've never tried it before. Now it doesn't have VNAV, so we're gonna have to set our own MDA. I guess you would just fly it in LNAV, right? Almost like the Phoenix you used to do it in this way. Let's come all the way back to 180. We'll start extending flaps and we'll get the, uh, 
a recording out. All right, it's flaps one. Flight recorder's coming up. We're not landing there. We're landing over there on the reef. Flaps two. I don't think I got it. Weird. It's so weird on the Bravo. You have to double tap your flaps. It's a new bug. What made you change the E-Jets instead of Airbus? Well, William, I didn't change. I'm still on the Airbus, man. I just I used to fly these before the Airbus. Okay, so what do we got here? After Colise, uh, minimum descent altitude, L Nav V Nav 360. Uh, okay. Flight director Q's coming off. We're gonna hand fly it. So she did. She drew that star again. You see that? So, RNAV approaches probably not highly recommended. We could fix it with a direct two there, but let's just hand fly her in. What was our uh, perf speed? The app 138. Why haven't you had those FPS issues on landing? I actually don't know, Rex. Maybe my uh, computer was downloading an update or something. I really don't know why. We don't have them now. Recording's coming on. We're turning final. Yeah, I guess approach mode is not model because if you don't have a VNAV, it won't be able to VNAV you down. In approach, so it would be you just have to L nav fly the approach. I think the flap double click is a plane issue since I have to do it with the Xbox. Interesting, Sado. All right. Honolulu traffic, Mercury 357. We're on about a uh, eight mile final runway eight right, Honolulu. Flaps three. Sounds are coming up. Final challenge, find vodka. Is vodka playing hide and seek down there? 2000, gear's coming down. Let's go flaps. Five. Flaps five, trim it out. We're on 138. Yoke cam is online. I'm gonna take over man manual thrust. Whoa! It's gonna be override it there. When you bring it out of the detent though, it went right to Toga because that's where my hardware was. All right. Two whites, two reds. On speed, looking good. Lights are on, everything's good. I got like this floodlight on here. I don't want chart light. Overhead pedestal. Uh, well, it all seems like we got a floodlight somewhere. It's all right. So you can see here we've got that flight path vector where it was stuck. So I hit the. Uh, I hit the sync button for the flight director, it seems to unstick it, but then it wants to like get locked in out mode. So there's definitely a bug with that flight path vector. In my opinion, that's probably one of the more dangerous bugs. You have to be aware of that. We are a thousand feet stable, clear to land. Nice wind shift there. Goodness, 25 knots. Let's go for the butter. We got a really long runway. Let's just let's see if we can really butter this one out. That first landing we had seemed really buttery. A little bit high, correcting. Five. Look at the water ripples. It's just so nice, man. Four 
I just love the way this plane feels. All right, we're gonna stretch it out for the butter. Here we go. Come on, pro simmer move. Not yet. Not yet. Now. Too early. Shoot. Oh, crunch. Oh shh. Ah, I love it though. I love the pain. The first one was way better. I love the pain. We got a long taxi. We stopped way early. Let's go. Let's roll it all the way out. That might have been a crunch. I don't know if we saved it. A little gust of wind right there. Yeah, we're definitely... See, if I don't press the rudder, look. Look at that wind. Get her back on center line. Caps, all right, don't forget. All right, I'm not gonna forget, I'm not gonna forget. Wingtip strike? No. A little bit of a, it blew us over a little bit to the right though, for sure. All right, here's our exit, let's clean her up. We're not gonna shut it down because we got two replays to watch. We already did a shut down and a turn on our first stop, so we'll keep the lights on. Now, how the heck did we get over to the terminal? Does 170 have a good range? Uh, not terrible. It can go Philly, Houston. It can go Philly, Houston pretty easily. Unless you have alternate gas. I mean, then you might get a little bit tied up. How do you get the push to talk for Aveo key six? Uh, I don't. My Aveo push to talk is uh, my control on my keyboard. Aveo traffic. Uh, no. Let's see, what are we? Mercury three percent. We're clear of runway eight right. Taxi to the ramp. Last call. Honolulu. Oh, Should we just park right here? <laughs> Is that Team Vodka over there? Oh, there's an airplane over there in like the dirt. I thought that was him. I did pick up the scenery right before stream. This is the I and I Honolulu. Pretty nice. In your experience, is the E1775 Landing flaps five, yeah, dub. Flaps five is normal. Flaps full is uh, for performance or shorter runways. Yeah, flaps five is the normal landing config for the 170. Uh, I see jets over there. Should we go over there? Oh, that's a runway. We don't want to go down the runway. I think I see the domestic terminal. I'm kind of curious. I've never been over there on the scenery. Let's take, take, take a look at it. All right, so E190 stream on Tuesday. <laughs> I flew a 175 Dallas to Calgary. There you go, that's some legs. FMS needles all bugged out. E195. I really want to fly that US Airways livery though. I think it's on the 190. The 195 and Azul. Hmm, that could be spicy. E195 Ops in Rio Negro, Santos Dumont. Robbie, U.S. Airways used to have them. 
They ditched him, though. Uh, we have the Midwest livery, Zippy. I do want to fly that. That was my first Embraer 190 that I flew on OE was a, a Midwest painted Embraer 190. 164, I just looked at it the other day. 164 Hotel Quebec, I think, was the tail number. 164 Hotel Quebec was a Midwest Airlines Embraer 190. That was the first jet I flew with the 190. We're gonna cross here at Charlie. I just don't know if there's any good, <laughs> not very many good sceneries or uh, routes for Midwest Airlines though. Pretty much middle of nowhere US, Midwest. Speaking of flights, I flew a 717 from Atlanta to Jackson, Mississippi. Nice. Got the Delta trading card from the pilots too. Ay, ay, ay. I thought that was the domestic terminal. It appears not. We're gonna go park over here next to this thing. I'm tired of taxiing. At Brickyard, you operate multiple airlines in the same month, day, or year? Same day, man. You could fly, uh, well, uh, no, not quite. It, it, it was actually separated by pairing. So uh, you had American pairings, you had Delta pairings, and United pairings. And then I want to say, like, before I left or right after I left, they started mixing it. I, I don't know, man. It's been so long. I feel like you definitely had pairings that were tailored to certain flying. So you had like, if you had one pairing, a four day trip, that was all Delta flying. Or if you had a pairing that was all United, it was all United flying. I think we actually start, oh we, oh hell. Let's go back to where we started. Full circle stream. We're gonna go right back to our gate. Our gate's right over here where we started. Wait, is that a static or is that someone getting ready to go somewhere? What the hell is that, a 340? That must be a, yeah, that's a static, or, I don't know, that's juice though. We're in Singapore, 340. Yeah, we're gonna park where we left, left. How fun is that? Yeah, no one needs to go to the fancy uh, domestic terminal. Team Vodka. C4 is where we started. Right here. That is traffic. That's pretty cool. Probably X-Plane. Oh, the lights just turned on for our arrival, chat. That's your green light. Go pick up the E-Jet. Have fun. Confirm, activate, monitor, intervene or else you will crash. Blinding everybody. Oop. We'll take this one. Oop. I'm joy taxiing, definitely, Jonathan, definitely. We're not even gonna shut it down. I should've just went into replay mode back there. All right. Let's do this thing. Replay. Let's watch, uh, let's watch that one first. Knots. Was it a Navy landing? Oh, <laughs> Wigda, what's up, man? Uh, my first one was Juice. The second one was probably a Navy landing. Navy traffic. Oh. Navy traffic. Sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. Forgot I was on. I may have still. Just got to the overnight. Ew. Hope you're somewhere cool, man. Dude, I got a three-day trip coming up in two weeks. I don't even know where my bag is. I haven't had an overnight since, like, August. I missed the landing with sim racing. Hey, Rot. Hey, our first landing was good. This one got a little sporty, and we, I think we chunked it. We got a little, got a little sporty. Yeah, 
you can see the wind we were battling there pretty good. I'm gonna wind it. Well, I'm gonna leave the time the way it is actually. Love that wing flex. You chunked yours, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty gusty. Replay them bindings, Mr. Caps. Yes, replay, then bindings. Replay then bindings. Replay then bindings. Don't forget. All right, send it forward. Let's get down on the dirt. Let's get down on the brass tacks here. Come on. Dylan Cooey, welcome to Private Pilot, sir. Glad to have you on board. Welcome to the channel. Exclamation point welcome for your perks here on the channel. I'll have some shorts coming for you members here. Oh, I do apologize. The Discord was bugged out for member sync. Fixed it last night. So if you had a membership and you couldn't gain, gain access to the V1 After Dark section, you should have access now. I had to relink the uh, server. It got hung up. So I do apologize. I love the detail of the that flash right there on the tail of that strobe, so nice. Yeah, I caught a big gust right here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that gust caught us, good. Come on. That gust got us good there. It was almost a really nice one, I think. Right, right here, gust. Ooh. I mean, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. Caught a big gust of the list. Uh, let me wind the time back a little bit. All right. I like watching it though from this wing view right here. Right there. Ooh, how many times have you <laughs> seen that when you're flying on the wing view and you just see it roll over and crunch? You mean auto throttle, A Rot? Yeah, we, I did auto throttle on. Uh, our Was it our first one? Uh, it worked on one of the first ones just fine. Um, all right, let's load the other one and then, yes, I want to load PHTO landing. Sim's going to freak out for a minute. Oh, look at the current weather back over here. Wow. Look, if we were trying to do the circle to land right now in, uh, Wherever this airport is, PHTO, you'd, we'd be hosed. Um, uh, mechanical Madness, I use Flight Recorder. It's off the Flight Sim TO. It's a free replay tool. It's the best one, the only one you should use. You can save replays, watch them later. If your sim crashes, you can just load back into the sim, load into the airplane you were in, and then load your replay. I actually like it better than the X-Plane replay system which for years was like the pinnacle of replays. Gustavo's here, what's up man? Laser Shark, you got it fixed now? Good deal, man. Completed my first two flights in the 146, really is a great aircraft. James Duplass, Plessis, Plessy? That's awesome, man. Good to hear it. The 146 is a great bird, man. I really enjoy the 146, too. All right. Stream seem good for everybody as far as quality? Because I was doing a 10,000 bit rate on this one. And uh, I think we'll continue to just leave it at 10K. I think it should be plenty. I mean, I'm not going to be able to get 2K because I don't have a 2K monitor. But uh, I've upped the bit rate pretty much to juice it out so if you have high speeds you should get pretty good quality images slightly sharper text slightly less fuzzies when you're looking at things live but uh internet has been real good so we're gonna we're gonna cherish it while we got it because i don't know how long this internet will last 
FSX had a decent replay, didn't have to start or stop, it just recorded the whole flight. That is true, A-Rod. Man, though, I remember so many times when, like, you hit replay after, like, <laughs> 12 hour flight and the sim just gets stuck in a loop and I want to see the replay so bad that I just left my computer on overnight because it's like oh I don't want to exit the sim get a TV I do have a TV not monitor though I do need a new monitor but then I need a new processor and then I need a new GPU and then I need if it ain't broke don't fix it man if it ain't broke don't fix it I'm loving it I'm enjoying it here's our butter you ready for this one this one was the butter it was perfect, I think. Hold it, hold it. Look at that weather. Just imagine landing there right now. Crunch it. Right. See how it was. Show those. Resume. Let's see, no frame gen on this one, so we can see a touchdown. Oh, yeah, look at that. Are you kidding me? Oh. Juice. Straight juice. I was nothing firm about that one. Nothing firm. Oh, just set her on perfectly. All right. Real quick, I want to show you my bindings and then I'll leave you one long replay. So, uh, that one was juice. I'm going to wind it all the way back. Control options. Here we go. Uh, let's go to Bravo Throttle Quadwent. I'm starting to get tongue tied. That means it's time to go hang it up and watch some Stig Aviation in the comfort of my bed. Uh, here we go. No, instruments and systems, flight instruments. Here we go. So I'll show you the concept and then you'll be able to apply it. So let's look at heading. When I select heading on my rotary knob on the Bravo, this little button here, it is button 19. So you have to like set it to vertical speed, select heading bug, and then do bind, record binding, scroll it into the heading bug, then unbind it. So you've got to make sure you bind select heading bug to whatever your button is, button 19. Once you have the rotary knob bound, now you need to do this binding and it's going to be a combo bind. When you go to bind, when you go to add binding, when you click here, you need to select button 19 and then before you don't end it at button 19, you then scroll your little wheel here to increase. So then you would do the same for decrease. So you have a combo binding. Select heading bug, whatever that is on the, this wheel, and then you do the increase and decrease on the wheel over here. That will allow you to appropriately select which manipulator you want. So I also have the course bound. I'll just filter by input so you can see. So if I scroll my wheel to the course on the Bravo, it selects VOR OBS. And then the same process applies. Increase VOR OBS, you want to bind the same button plus the wheel to the right. If you want to decrease, then you do the binding of decrease. Uh, and that will allow you to uh, decrease it. Now I can't get out of it. All right. Hopefully, uh, oh, now it's like locked. I don't know why it's locked. Uh-oh. Why is it locked? There we go. Go back. So, um, hopefully, that will help y'all get those bound. SPAD and Moby Flight with LVAR is the way to go for complex key bindings. I agree, but this is not that complex. All you have to do is just make sure you're getting the proper one. So, like, there's my airspeed bug bindings. You have this one, select airspeed, and then you just combo it. You need the airspeed select plus the scroll up, and you need the scroll down. But... I could definitely see if you want to do more hardcore stuff. Like, I don't know if FPA is possible. That'd be cool to do an FPA binding. That's probably all possible through LVARs and SPAD. So um, mess with it. Your numbers might be different than mine, but it makes a huge, huge difference. So with that chat, I'm signing off. Enjoy the last replay of the absolute butter zone here. 
Uh, and to wrap this whole thing up, uh, is the FSS E-Jet worth it? In my opinion, if you know how to cami, confirm, activate, monitor, intervene, and you're not afraid of using vertical modes to comply with vertical restrictions, such as FPA, flight level change, vertical speed, then absolutely it's worth it. At the end of the day, just know what you're buying. You're buying an early access aircraft. Everything's subject to change. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's possible that you have updates, it's gonna change things, things can break. That's just the name of the game with early access. So if you're not okay with early access, then I wouldn't recommend it. But uh, this is the second early access aircraft I recommend. The first one was the Lear 35. And I haven't had anybody really comment on the stream saying, oh, I got the Lear 35 and it's absolute trash. No, it's just an early access aircraft. It's fun to fly. Um, and it gets updated. And I'm sure this is going to continue to get updated. And I think it's going to open up a whole lot of flying that we haven't really been able to do in the sim yet. So, that said, I'm not done. Let's do Embraer 190 on uh, Tuesday night. I can't fly tomorrow. I got a long day trip tomorrow. I'm going up to Detroit, then down to Miami, and then uh, back to the ATL. So, I'm going to be flying through the eclipse. Hopefully, the world doesn't end tomorrow while I'm flying. Until Tuesday. Stay safe, stay healthy. If you pick up the Embraer, post the screenshots in the Discord. Let's flood the V1 Discord with Embraer juice. Because I'm absolutely loving it. All right, y'all take care. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'm V1. See you.